What up, chat? What's up to the YouTube viewership? I know you guys are out there. And shout out to the SoundCloud guys. Man, if you are a SoundCloud guy, please comment below. Let me know, man, because I'll be feeling like I'm uploading for nothing. Let me know y'all the sound. Let me know if you the SoundCloud gang, because y'all the ones that might metal. Yeah, uh, matter, metal, whatever. Uh, but shout out to you guys. Shout out to YouTube, man. If you're on YouTube, hit that like button, comment. If you're not subscribed already, you have been missing out. Um, this is probably, I will honestly, with the way the club series is going, chat, this is probably going to be my longest podcast yet, honestly. You know what I'm saying? I think this is going to be a long podcast. I think we're going to be here for a while, chat. So, it's a lot to talk about. Like I said, man, hit the like button. If you are on YouTube, uh, we are sub only stream that or not stream, but sub only chat, man, because we're gonna talk about a lot of stuff and a lot of stuff that's uh, I, I don't want to say sen sensitive, I guess is the word. Um, but we are gonna talk about a lot of things. You know what I'm saying? As you guys see, the chat is right here. Let me see, yeah, right here. So you guys on YouTube can follow along who I'm talking to. I want you guys listen. I want you guys to be a part of this. This one I'm talking about. We go live at this every Tuesday night. You can follow, watch these lives, twitch.tv slash dub. All these links are below. Put the notifications on so you know. We are late today. It is 940. And the reason we are late is because we watched the Eagles Club Series. Well, we tried to watch the Eagles Club Series. Um, it was a little rough. And, and, and But we'll get into that. We'll get into um, D. Crawford's kid again. We had an emergency podcast. I did not upload it. You know, it was just we talked about the game because we were so stunned about that game. So we'll watch that game again. We're going to talk about problem, uh, the game he played. Not really about the game. Wasn't that interesting. Wasn't that great. Wasn't that many great games, you know, but more about the little glitch uh, and the stoppage of play that we talked about. Everybody had their own opinions about it. You know, people are going to problems, the biggest figure in the um, in the community. So people are going to be on the side. People are going to be against them. And we'll talk about that. You know what I'm saying we're going to talk about beast mode. Uh, who probably was the most dominant player in two games at obviously this tournament. I, I pose the question, who has ever been more dominant than them games Beast Mode played? Uh, we'll talk about the other clubs too, mix those in. And we'll talk about the Cowboys Club Series. My man, uh, this persistent dude, pitched the ball for all the go-ops, and we will talk about that. And lastly, of course, man, we'll talk about Fame Nate. We'll talk about his situation. And news that happened while we were watching the Eagles Club Series that I was brought... News that was brought to me was the fact that now they have banned more people. EA has banned people from having prior, you know, trouble with the law. We'll put it that way. I really don't know, but we will, you know, trouble for the law. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and I don't know if you guys know this. Honestly, I literally just heard that while I was watching the Eagles Club Series that we, yes, we will definitely get into Truzy Paws. All right, starting over, boys. Starting over. What's up, YouTube? What's up, Twitch chat? Man, this is the Needed Podcast, episode 55. No, <laughs> that was nuts. Starting over. We're going to just erase that, but we definitely will kill Truzy. But I hope Truzy's a good sport, man, for real. Because uh, he did get into it with Joke after Joke killed him, you know what I'm saying? And uh, we'll see... Uh, I know Trues is a good sport because we always busting his balls, man. But at some point, man, I do want to let you guys know, man, that everybody I make jokes about, which is pretty much all of you guys, including myself, um, it is all jokes. Uh, I love all you guys. I appreciate all you guys' support because without you guys, this podcast would not be popping. Uh, you guys keep it going. And, and I want you guys to be as big a part of the podcast as you guys, as I am, honestly. Um now, oh, we did. We could talk about Jaybird trying to capping in the first quarter, and then not getting the first down. First quarter cap, no first downs. It's like you know that. Also, as a topic of Jaybird, you talk about the listen. I will be the first person to tell you guys that running has no skill, but jukebox, there's a skill gap to it. And when there's a skill, Jay Bird is at the bottom of the barrel of jukebox skill 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 gap. He is so far fucking down there. He's not even in the he's not in the list of top hundred jukeboxers. He is awful. Like it's like it was like Jay Bird only juked when he saw his offensive lineman. That's the only time he juked. Or the bigger the hole for him to run, the more jukes he did. 
1,000%. But, and you guys watched it. You know, I'm not really going to get into it because you guys watched it, and I don't really want to talk about running that much. But we're going to talk about the Eagles Club Series, man. Uh, what? This ain't work? Oh, no, I got to do this one. Okay, there we go. Boom. Eagles Club Series. Just watched it. And I'll tell you, it was hurt. It was hurtful for me to watch it because I watched three people that I, I just... I lost to two of the three people. You know what I'm saying? I did. And, and that's not really the game. I mean, I don't think the game is good, but it wasn't the game. It's more about me being ass. But watching those people play was a realization that I might be ass, you know? And it's tough to realize that, you know? And um, for me, it was tough watching those guys. Gene had just texted me and said it was rough. Gene definitely smoked that game. Gene definitely smoked that game. Uh, he could have won the first one fairly easily. And I don't want to hear nobody else say... I don't want to hear nobody else say anything about the run being bad. The run is good. The run is high-powered. I've watched the best players uh, in the world struggle against the run. Period. I, I don't know what you guys have watched. I don't know what you guys have seen, but I've seen the best players in the world struggle against the run. You know, even that last game, Henry versus Tony, who they told me is a doctor, like a real doc. Is that is that true, Chat? Like, is that true? That's true. That's pretty cool. But well, you know what that tells me? Anybody can cook. And I don't want anybody cooking. Is that crazy for me to say? I don't want a doctor fucking being a pro man player. What the hell type? I think that's a terrible thing for men. What? It's cool. It's cool for sure. It looks awesome. You know what I'm saying? But let's really step back. My man is doing surgery and, and then can qualify for the MCS. What? Now, those spin it, it's a good story. It's a good story. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. And you know what this does? You know what this adds to? This adds to anybody can cook. You can be a surgeon. You can be a teacher. You can be a student. You could be a mechanic, a custodian. Anybody can cook. Anybody can get a ball to Saquon Barkley, get a, 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 a Holliser missile as, as your tight end and Joe Thomas, just knock out all the defense and score touchdowns. Anybody can cook. It's pretty rough. It's pretty wild. You know, a bus driver like Larry Proof, anybody can cook. You know, and and and, and honestly, he didn't know really at all how to play defense. Um. So Henry scored pretty much fairly easily, and that's the biggest key with playing these runners. Man, if you score, if you score, extend the game, make them. They're going to make mistakes eventually. You know, what I'm saying one of the biggest mistakes that Gene. I don't want to say it was a mistake that Gene made at milking the whole clock, but he milked the whole, if you're going to milk the whole clock, you can't miss a field goal, you know? And that's why you lose the game. Even if Gene makes that field goal 6 nothing at halftime, it's a whole different game. You know what I mean, Chad? And, and, but because Henry's scoring so much, I mean, the, the, the actual doctor is not going to score on 100% of his possessions. No matter how many broken abilities they put in the game, uh, he's not going to score every single time. But I will tell you, it was entertaining. My man had the big stars, the big camera angle, pure entertainment. Was it not, Chad? That's why I asked you. It was fun to watch. Uh, but shout out to Henry. Henry is really good. Um, I I feel like Henry, like, he, Henry isn't, shout out to Larry Proof in the chat, but Henry isn't like a weird, like, I feel like he's so young, he's never like, seen enough adversity. Like, he don't give a shit about nothing. He just... Like, he had no emotion. And I think he's in a good spot because of that. Like, he's he really might be a robot. Like, he don't have no... I feel like Henry don't even have fun. Like, he's just playing it because he's tough. Like, yeah, I'm tough at this. Let me go ahead. I'm going to just play Madden. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like he's so young, no adversity. And he just popping because of it, you know. But he's definitely gonna make a run. Um, definitely gonna look good. Uh, uh, he's definitely look good, but he's definitely gonna play. But then he said, man, the rest of the division is sweet. 
between Ghost, I don't even know who's in the Giants, and the Cowboys, which we have news about later. I mean, other than Ghost, I, I mean, no, the Giants still got Evil O, and they still got VY. Um, so, to sub on mobile chat, you have to go to the actual browser. You cannot do it through the app. But anyway, like I said, uh, that was the Eagles club. Um, I really don't have any games to go over. Uh, Gene definitely smoked the game. Uh, he milked He milked so much. I felt like Gene went there and was like, yo, I want to go home. He was like, Gene went there and was like, yo, I'm over this shit. And just literally was just, I'm going to just get this game done as fast as possible. See what happens. Because then he, like, he started chewing clock with a minute left. And he had no timeouts. And he was inside the 30. And he was down three. And he just like, you know, it, it was pretty nuts. You know, uh. He kind of like, his clock management wasn't the best. Uh, but it didn't work out, and he got lurked. Shout out to Tony for the lurk, man. The doc, if you can put surgery on ankles, man, you can catch some picks. Uh, Tony came up second place. What did he make, like $3,000 or something like that, more, maybe four. It, it was good, man. But like I said, anybody can cook. So if you guys are watching this, there's 400 people in the chat right now. If you guys are watching this, just know, anybody can cook. You guys can cook. So that's what I'm saying. There's 500 people, four, 478 people in here right now, right? It's going to be 1,000 of you that watch this on YouTube. It's going to be 15 of you that listen to this on SoundCloud. Like I said, SoundCloud gang, I got y'all. I pay money to put these up every single week. So, you know, I, it's costing me money for y'all to listen to this SoundCloud people. But I appreciate you guys. But anyway, like I said, you guys can cook. You guys can compete. So there's no reason why you guys aren't trying to, aren't trying to get to these tournaments. You know, like a 16-year-old played, a 35-year-old played, a doctor played, Larry Proof drives a bus every day. You know what I'm saying? Anybody can play Madden. So don't ever, this, this is pretty much when we get to, don't ever, like, say you can't do it, seriously. You know, so it's definitely cool. Yeah, we're talking about, they're talking about how much Henry, uh, exactly right, Mark. I can't cook. I gave up cooking. I, I, I pretty much said I don't want to cook no more. I just want to, I just want to manage the restaurant. If that makes sense. And that's why we got the stream. That's why we got the podcast. That's why I got you guys. And we talk about Madden, man. What's up? Donnie Moore in the chat. Uh, my man Ethan just asked to be a photographer. And you guys see this. He wants to be a photographer. Like, golly, how bad are you at Madden? That's the angle. Not commentary. He wants to be the photographer. Nah, see, y'all, see, Colin, you don't know no more. See, chicks in high school don't care about money yet. Chicks don't care about money until they get old enough to money matters to them. Y'all lost. See, y'all lost right now. Y'all lost. Y'all lost. See, and and honestly, I want to ask what the age. You guys gotta understand, man. Once women have real bills, that's when they care about money. 21, 20, uh, like 25 ish, early 20s. Then they start caring about money. High school, they don't give you just gotta be cool. High school, you just have to be cool. And you gotta realize, and, and some of you guys, let me tell you guys, some of you guys are in high school. Now listen, you don't gotta, you just gotta be cool. And and you gotta actually and you gotta realize this about high school girls too, is that in high school, only five to ten percent of the guys actually talk to girls because they don't know how yet. So if you're one of those five, ten percent guys that actually can, you know talk to women and have, you know, relations, like verbal conversations and sound cool, That that's more important than having money. You can't be broke, you know what I'm saying? But, you know what I'm saying? I feel like, I, like that's all I'm saying. Like, I, I understand. So, obviously, having 30K in high school is going to help you get some hoes. However, it's not like when you 25, 30, like, now I need to make this $100,000. Like, if you're 30 years old and you don't have no money, GG's in the G chat. The chat is GG's. But you can be broke in high school and still finesse some shit, all right? But anyway, let, let, we went on a tangent. Is there anything else you guys want to talk about high, about the Eagles club, man? Henry looks like, you know, looked like he did in the classic. Um, but I felt like I wanted to see Gene play Henry because I felt like the... I, I mean, I lost to Bobby V, but I still think he's... I, it's hard for me to comment on this because I lost to these guys, but I think they've kind of lost playing defense. Um, no, Henry don't have any. I don't think Henry has any game. Nah, I don't think so. No. But that's just, I don't really, I can't really judge, but I don't know. 
I don't think so. But I mean, I, when I was 16, it, it ain't like I was out there banging the baddest bitches. I was taking what I could get. You know what I'm saying? Although he does look kind of drippy in this here. Uh, I mean, he got the boot cut genius too. I mean, we gotta just, we gotta, we gotta have a conversation, chat. We really have to have a conversation about boot cut jeans. I thought you guys like kind of knew better about the boot cut jeans. I, I, I really thought we knew better. You know, I, I mean, he looks kind of drippy. I'm not mad at him in this picture. The boot cut, like the boot cut jeans, just you just cannot like. It is 2020, chat. 2000. It's not 2000. It's not 2004. It's not 2005. We really have to talk about bootcut jeans. You know what I'm saying? They like listen. Now I'll be honest. Bootcut can only rock. Maybe if you got Tim's on, then maybe they might could work. But it just nah. You can't not. You know what I'm saying? But I just, you just can't like it's just too. Yeah, I will. No, Skimbo, they don't work with Kyrie's. Ky Skimbo, do not show up with boot cut jeans, man. Skimbo, don't embarrass us like that. But anyway, yeah, let, let, let's bring up. I will bring up another. Uh, this is actually funny as we talk about this, as we go through these pictures right here. Where I'm, what the hell is this? All right, as we go through these pictures, because it, it's some funny pictures. Before we talk about the Kevin D. Croft game again, it's definitely some pictures that I, I wanted to laugh at, you know what I'm saying, with you guys, you know what I'm saying? God damn, oh, no, that's the right one. Gene looked like he want to go home. Like, yo, I want to go home. Like, does he, he wants to go home right now. Like, he don't want to be there. He still got his slides on. Like... Gene wants to go home. He got his slides on. He went and bought a pair of jeans because they told him he got to wear jeans. Bobby V might have the best drip in this picture. I'm going to be honest. Chat, now you guys can tell me Bobby V probably wins this argument because he don't have the boot cuts. So you can't have the Henry's and then, and, you know what I'm saying? Like, you got to have the straight the straight fits or the straight, you mean the straight leg joints. You know what I'm saying? To yeah, Tony, uh, Tony not bad. Like, he don't give a shit. You know what I'm saying? Tony, uh, Tony's not. Tony is second place. Henry is third. Gene don't give a shit. Gene want to go home so bad right now. That's that's he want to go home. But now let's go down. We want to keep. You know what I'm saying. I did not know this kid was 4'11", bro. Like I I did not know. Like God damn. The, it, we have finally found somebody, chat. We have found somebody that joke is taller than. The first person in the man community, joke is taller than. We have found the first person. I did see him having a problem, but you know. No, Bilski, Bilski, make, this guy make Bilski look like, like Embiid. You know what I'm saying? But all these guys, look, no, nobody has the boot cuts. These guys are in 2020. I mean, I'm not mad at them. I mean, Kerry literally just does... I, Kerry is the biggest person that plays Madden that really doesn't give a shit about Madden. Do you guys understand what I'm saying when I say that? Like, he plays Madden, but he really don't give a shit. Like, are you, do you guys, like, do you guys understand, like, what I'm saying? Like, he don't care. Kerry just show up to show up. Like, he just be playing like, oh, yeah, here we go. Oh, my man, Jadami. What did y'all say? How I say his name? Jadami? Jadami? But here, and this is another one I just got. I mean, we're just here, boys. We're going to have a fun time tonight. I hope you guys are buckled up. D. Croft is 6'7". About 280. D. Croft, bruh. Because Kim is not short. Like, holy shit. Kim is like... Kim probably like 5'10, 5, 5'11. 5, Yo, D. Croft is the. I, listen, remember when we did the football draft chat? Remember when we did the football draft? D. Croft is playing the tackle position. D. Croft, he said, hold the door. He might really be hold door. But we got to talk about the khakis. The D. Croft khakis might be legendary, chat. The D. Croft picked them Jones up. All, I, 
He got wrinkles. I didn't even know you could get wrinkles in those spots. Like, what the hell were you doing in those khakis before you put them jaws on, chat? Like, he is. That this is definitely a nasty streak outfit, bro. Oh my! Anybody that wears khakis with sneakers is fucking nuts. Like nuts. Like khakis and sneakers are nuts. And the hands in the pockets. And his hands in his pockets. Oh. His hands are in the pockets. <laughs> like what? <laughs> All right. But I, you know, when I saw this, bro, like I, the khakis were nuts to me. Full hands in the pocket. You see, Kid with the half hands, cause Kid got Kid pants so tight you can't put the whole po hand in the pocket. That is the limit to the stuff you can put in kids' pockets. It's half hands. That's it. You can't have a wallet if you're kid. You can just carry your ID solo. You can't have a wallet with these pants. You can only put half a hand in the pockets. And we got my man. Is this my man Space? Who is this? Is this, this ain't Space Jam. This the other boy. I, I forget who this, who this guy is. But but he, he looked like he lost. Like he got lost. He don't like. He just there. My man Jada me. Just die me. However you say, I'm sorry. Swampy Fork. That's it. Know the name of Swampy Fork. That's kind of a hell name. Jadami Jada. He, he, he actually, his leg actually is, he's actually chilling. He got the Yeezys. He got the straight legs. He's cool. Now, you can have the straight legs. You don't have to have the skinnies. Kiv is all skinny. I mean, you know, when, when you, when you you know, Jadami and Decroft size, you know, you can't have skinnies. I know we can't see the sneakers because I don't really want to mess up my overlay because I got to set up to play all these games and all this other shit. I can do this and show you sneakers, you know what I'm saying? I can, that's the best I can do for y'all right now. You know what I'm saying? You can't have, you can't be, D. Croft it cannot walk around in skinnies, but he can walk around with an iron. God damn. Like, holy hell. Beast Mode Mac, one of the swaggiest players out, you know what I'm saying? As we go to this. Now this is what we've been waiting for here, chat. I have never seen some like let's be beast mode not on the swag. Beast mode is on the bottom end of the swag list, right? Cause let's start let's start here real quick. As a matter of fact, fuck it. I, I I you guys are gonna have to deal with this later when it gets to the games. Now we can talk about this. You know what I'm saying? Here we go. Boom. Now let's be real. Nene, my man sickened. They look pretty fly. All right? They look cool. They got the straight legs. They got the low tops. We can agree on that, chat, right? They cool. But now we go over to beast mode. Look, and it's crazy. These guys had the same stance. You got to be pretty damn lame to make beast mode look cool. And Truzy succeeded in that. If you stand next to beast mode and make him look like he has swag, oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Truzy, man. Like, first, I don't even know where to start. I don't even know where to start. Is it the tucked in? Not only does he have the... How do you get your jersey tucked in to them jeans? This whole area look like it's bunched up right here. It looks... He don't look comfortable at all. Like, it look like he got swim shorts on underneath these, these jeans. Like, What? Panties in a bunch of, and, and what, do we tuck this in and then unfold it? Like, what's the, is the hoodie tucked in too, or just the jersey? That's the questions I have. He, like, these are the questions I have. Like, check. And then he went with the, you know, with the pattern stone wise jersey. Like, seriously, these are the questions I have. And, and, and this is the, and he, they kind of, kind of slim fit up top. But once they get low, they get a little wider and wider. That's how Clef like his girls, you know what I'm saying? Once they get lower, they get a little wider and wider. You know what I'm saying? Now, I want... And, and then we talked about, I mean, how he double-knotted the Yeezys. Like, he... Like, listen. <laughs> he... How do you double-knot the Yeezys? I don't even double-knot my work boots. I don't even think this is a double-knot. This is a trip. This is I got so much damn shoelace that I don't know what to do with. I'm going to just tie the hell out of it. Oh, man. This is rough. 
But that's the Truzy, man. And the worst part was, this is this is the worst part, is that Truzy, he knew he went to the lobby. He knew they was going to kill him. And he, this is his best. This is his best. He ain't fuck around. He knew he was going to live event. He knew he was going to kill him. He knew that. And that was his best. Dead ass. No, but that was funny, man. Uh, just killing people is funny. Truzy don't got no fake Yeezys. Don't tell me that. We too old for that. I don't. There's nobody else to really even cap at. You know what I'm saying? But that was that. But anyway, that's at the Eagles Club. Let's talk about the this D. Croft and Kip game, man. Let's talk about that chat. Now, <sighs> I see a lot of overreaction. A lot of overreaction. And I'll tell you why. This was the first good game that we could watch. A group or not. The first good game, right? I'm trying to think about all the other games we watched so far. Classic was kind of ass. The whole tournament was kind of ass. Yeah, it was kind of ass. Um, yeah, I mean, Jay Mills versus Wesley was a good game. Was an all-time great. And the reason uh, you got D. Croft and Kill, you got two good passers. These guys aren't, you know, they aren't. They're really good passers, and they both pass the ball, you know. And when you see these two really good passers play that really are invested in man, they're not doctors. They're not, um, you know, students. Well, I don't know what they're doing. Maybe they're still, maybe kept going to school. Maybe D. Croft and got, you know, associate's degree. I don't know. He got khakis like he got an everyday job. D. Croft looked like he went from the workplace to, to the live event, you know, with the khakis. So he might, he might have an associate's degree, work part-time somewhere. I don't know. But I said to me like this is um, – we haven't seen that many good games. And then when you see a great game, it's like when you see a great game mixed in with all the other bullshit. It's like when you go to the bar and you see a nice six, but all the other chicks are twos and threes, cleft style. So you see a bunch of cleft girls, and then you see a six, and she looks like a dime because she around all cleft women. You know what I'm saying? So it's pretty nut. So that's why it makes it stand out that much better. You know what I'm saying? So... That makes, you know, this game seem that much more. So I feel like we overreacted. People were saying, it's the best game ever. Blah, 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 blah. Now, I do want to watch this game again because I did feel like this game, I did feel like this game was uh, worth my watching. Now, hold on. See, this was perfectly aligned and everything, and you and I moved it to laugh at Truzy. Shout out to Truzy, man. You know you the homie, man. I think I subbed to Truzy. I think I clicked unsub because he ain't been streaming that much lately. Nah, Clef like the Big Jones, you know what I'm saying? I seen him on the cruise. He was on the Big Jones. I said, where Clef go? And his little brother was like, oh, he with, he with Shirley. I said, oh, shit, okay. Big Shurs. I said, okay. So I'm trying to tell you. All right. So the main thing I want to, as we watch this game, I want to get back to some of the decisions that uh, D. Croft made. And this, uh, look, we skipped right to it. I mean, we have a fourth and, I mean, uh, see, this, these overlays are kind of rough. But we have D. Croft who went for a fourth and, or he got to a third and seven here. He's got a chance to end this game, chat. Now, you guys are with me. You know what I'm saying? They cook and treat you good. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes some people only in the fat girl bracket anyway. You know what I'm saying? Y'all got to realize that. But anyway, so we got DeCroft has a chance to win the game. You score a touchdown on this drive, you have a chance to win the game. And 3-4 odd. Now, I will tell you after playing D.C., what 3-4 odd is, is can this white guy who Christian, he got Christian McCaffrey, can he block this guy? That's the entire game. Because we know how to block this guy. We know how to make sure everybody lines up. But this tight end is just an asshole. And DeCroft knows that. Kiv knows that. This tight end is the biggest liability on the field. And because nobody passes, and all these doctors are cooking with their power holes and nasty streaks, nobody talks about this part being bad about the game. I, I cannot believe how this is never talked about. Because I was here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people in the box. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blockers. Honestly, for me, it's lined up perfectly. You block that guy. Block him. Block him. Block him. Block him. Block him. Block him. Seven on seven. There's nothing cute. 
There's no stunts. He's literally just blitzing these seven people against seven blockers. And D. Croft before the snap is saying, man, I please surely hope my seven block his seven. But this is for the game, and he actually did not even pass here. He ran the ball. I wonder if I can go back to the play before. Second, yes, exactly. Second and 15, he does pass, and we'll see what happens. You know, and we don't talk about this at all. As we, he only put three routes on the field. Slide in the right, right. Slide into the right. Block Lawrence Taylor, please, Christian McCaffrey, and there he goes. And he has to run with Aaron Rodgers. Actually, a good job of picking up eight yards right there. So the next play, now he sips his water as people do at these live events. I feel like it's just nerves. You just sip your water for nerves. Nobody is fucking thirsty. You know, when you have khakis on like that, you don't get thirsty. All right, it's just nerves. I'm letting out the nerves a little bit. So we get to a third and seven, and he saw, damn, I ain't blocked Lawrence Taylor. So instead of going for the game here, you know what I'm saying? Instead of going for the game, what he's going to do is run, which isn't bad because he shortens the game. A guaranteed run will take this to the fourth quarter. And he runs and gets blurred by Troy Palomalu. So we're in the fourth quarter. Whereas, you know, if he had confidence in his ability to block that blitz or had an escape artist, he certainly would have passed right there, let his nuts hang. So that kept Kiv in the game. Boom, boom. That's what happens. Uh, we got the punt the punt glitch. How did Kiv get stopped with the ball here as he sips the water? Oh, yeah, Kiv got picked off. Yeah, on that, on that, uh, that wheel route to the running back. Damn, this shit happened fast. Oh, no, Z-Croft always sipping water. God damn. He's just a water-sipping-ass dude, huh? We will talk about the Cowboys winner, man. Yeah, D-Croft might drink after every play. You know what I'm saying? It's just, I'm telling you, I never, I always say, because I remember the chat used to kill problem because he would sip every time he got died. And every time he gave something up, he would just sip some water. That was a huge play by Moore right there to break that pass. If they used to, I, I think it was Jet who used to say, problem used to only sip the water when he got dotted. Or when he gave some shit up, he started sipping the water. And and people, and so from there on, I always think, like, you only sip the water when you're a little salty. Like, when you give some shit up. Yeah, I, I never, like, sip water in between uh in between man games. Unless it's coffee. Uh, and this was the play of the game. As we saw, I mean, we see a cross man on a running back. Really nowhere for Kiv to go. Gets picked off there by Savage. And this, once again, can end the game. All you got to do is play, you know what I'm saying, is play say, or go get points. Any type of points win this game. And somehow we get to a second and, and 16. Because on first down, we run this shit run again. So my point is he playing really, really, really conservative. You know what I'm saying, chat? You know what I'm saying? So for me, that was, uh, yeah, he had to, yeah, but you're never throwing that flat pass there. It's pretty much just a route to run people off. Here we go with the guy to block. Christian McCaffrey, please. If Chris, if this is how you feel. Christian McCaffrey, if you block now, you know you're going to throw to, if you put the running back out, you're going to throw to the running back. Now it's just a matter of how many yards can the running back get right here. You know, he throws underneath, actually breaks one tackle, which is kind of, uh, is a little bit rare in this game for a running back with no abilities to break it to, as we see D. Croft again with the water sip. He was sipping the shit out of water. Then he put the cap back on every time. You know, he put the cap back on properly. So as you can tell, he was uh, getting a little, uh, nerves are the, uh, the thing right here. Nerves are definitely the thing. Yeah, he just sips water all the time. But uh, here we go, and this was the worst play that he ran. I talked about this last time. Um, you have the same blitz. Uh, you have one defender on the right, so you so and so you got to put two offensive players in that location. If there's only one defender on the right, you have to put two offense. It's just beating zone one on one. But he brings this slot receiver back to the middle of the field rather than put him to the right, and they both go right into where he had defenders. You know, I actually feel like he blocked the blitz that time. Maybe he didn't. I think Lawrence Taylor still screened. So that was a play he'd like to have back. I'm surprised he didn't sip water after that one. Um, and then we have where he punts the ball and Kiv catches it. And Kiv has two hours to think about how am I going to draw, throw a dot. Kiv is not stupid. Kiv is going to figure out how to throw a dot as we see the highlights of this game. 
I mean, this is the longest delay. And so Kiv sits there for two minutes and figures out what am I going to do once I get the ball back? You know, as anybody would, you know, and anybody in these situations would stop the game, get it to the right spot. You know what I'm saying? And we got to them right spots. And, you know, anybody's going to think about what I'm going to do. And these are the plays that give in that whole 20, I think it was 25 minutes this delay was, was 25 minutes. So in those 25 minutes, um, Kiv definitely thought of any play he could run. And he came out with the first play, he came out with a spread. Spread was his call uh, because D. Crawford been running a lot of cover two, a lot of things to keep him in the pocket. Uh, great job by him using this power specialist D tackle that he had. Uh, keeping Kiv in the pocket. So you see he comes out in the spread, pretty two streaks. I call this the Larry Proof 101. Pass lead inside, possession catch. Uh, possession catches are another thing we really... I, I feel like possession catches this year are kind of like the high ball last year. It's really nothing you can do about these diving animations. Really a quick snap right here. I, it's crazy to say it's a quick snap when he audible, but it was fast as hell. And Kid going for the whole play, and he's right into touchdown zone already. So in one, he had like one minute, 40 seconds. So in like 20 seconds... He gets up. He goes from, you know, his own nine to the 25-yard line. You know, that's pretty wild um, that he got all the way up there that fast. Goes back to the play that had not been working for him. I, this play did not work for him all game other than throw to the running back. Uh, he went to the tight end there. That's probably the other read. Obviously, is the other read. Broken up. Could have been picked off there. Honestly, you do that in the hell of traffic to a, a shit tight end. And 43, I believe that's Palomalu there. So he definitely broke that up. Gets Kiv to a third or, what you know, second down. But he has plenty of time. Has all three timeouts. There is a situation in here where if I was Decrop, I would have called timeout. As he's looking for a corner route here and the running back. It's just two options he has here. Corner, He has the corner route or he has the running back route. Just got to make sure Fletcher Cock does, doesn't dominate. Stays in the pocket enough. Hit Randy Moss on the corner route. I would have called timeout if I was D. Croft. Chat, you guys let me know why why he wouldn't call a timeout right there. You know, I would have just to, uh, just to you know, just to give myself a chance with the ball. Kiff probably knows that. Bangs a run right there. Boom. But he does not have a chance. This It all comes down to the next two plays. As you see, Decroft, uh, he has three three tries to get into the end zone here. Kiv milks it enough to where it's going to be three plays. It's going to be the whole game. You know, he's got to get in the end zone right here. And it was two runs this... Oh, shit, sure, I sneeze. Whew. He's got two runs to get into the end zone, or three runs, really, depending on how they go. Dante Hall gets to the two. Kiv uses another timeout. Then Kiv is going to run again, be able to use another timeout. And just depending on where this run goes, I mean, you run the ball here just to try to get closer to the end zone, Chad. If you get closer to the end zone, bang, that gives you an opportunity to uh, run again on fourth down. And what helps D. Croft here, honestly, is that this run is going to get blown up. Blown up in the backfield. Uh, where is it at? So third and goal, instead of getting half the yard as he gets blown up, Randy Moss gets wrapped up six-yard line. Kip calls a timeout. Last play of the game, he could have waited to one second to call that timeout, you know? Uh, so this last play of the game. Now, I will tell you guys, you guys can watch this play with me, is that um, Fletcher Cox and D. Croft calls timeout. I believe he got just a little confused, that bunch being on the left side and didn't want to think about it, just be ready for it. And a bunch is on the weak side. Um, D, uh, you guys can watch Fletcher Cox on this play. He actually gets manhandled. And one thing I learned is that never put your faith in the defensive line. <laughs> they're gonna they're gonna be tough sometimes, but let you down all the other times. Um, uh, what kills him here too is he sends the spy a little early. The clock in his head that we all have. Just oh, he RB was kind of butt, but sends the spy too early. Doesn't have a spy. Rolls out. And for the man with all the stick in the world, we got to try to click on somebody there. We got to try to click on somebody. 
Like, we got to try right here. We got to try to click on one of these dudes. We just on more. A little late with the click on. Yeah, Burns got blurred. You know what I'm saying, and I don't know where. I, I, it was just it's wild when it's wild when the quarterbacks get outside the pocket. Why was D. Croft yelling? Oh. So we get an ice extra point. Kid makes the ice. We go into overtime. D. Croft gets the football in overtime. And um as we see that, I don't want to see that again. Once again, that time he did <laughs> that time, this is this is this is DC. Can you block all these guys? That time he did not. They scream free, and it's hard to make a read because you literally when this at you have to snap throw. And if you if you try to wait that second to make a read, you can't. You know, so it's almost gotta be a pre-snap read and you know, that's when I was like, damn, he really going to lose this game, honestly. That was looking rough, you know. And now we come up here again. I'm going back to the max protection. Got to go back to the max protection, right? You have to try to block this the same way. but And no matter what you do, it's just, does the contain glitch inside my tackle? That's the whole game. That time it got blocked. So you'll be good. And he goes with a curl route. Gets the animation in front of Denzel Ward, Brandon Cooks. I mean, he just boxed them out. I mean, we've all played Madden. Sometimes they drop that. It's rare that that DB comes around with the curl route and picks that off. You know what I'm saying, chat? But now we're back to the same thing. Uh, so here we go with the... It's just, can he block the outside linebacker? That's the whole game right now. Can can Christian McCaffrey block the outside linebacker? We get a snap here. He, does, he almost does, and he holds on to the last second. Maybe that movement to the right helped him a little bit. If you guys watch this again, watch. It's just Lawrence Taylor. Watch him. Almost glitches through there, but gets a bad an, bad angle, I guess. Um, and, and the tight end actually blocks him. So it worked out for Decroft on that play. We get back to the, the next play after that first down. If you're Kiv, I'm, I'm not upset with how defense is going right now. I'm not uh, overly terrified by it. I'm not upset, honestly, Chet. Um, I'm feeling good. He goes to a wheel route here. Almost get the pick there. Now, I got picked off by a D-tackle, but, you know, Linval Joseph is not that fast. D-Croft wants him to run a sharper post right there. He almost ran, like, the hot-routed post. But we get here to second down now. So, if I'm Kiv, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I'm cool. And, and D-Croft is thinking, what can I do? I mean, I would just out-route, drag, streak pretty much every play with this look. But he motions over, and Kib does. He goes for the press at the line, and he just gets blurred on the press, and that's GG's to the crib. You know what I'm saying? So I, I think, I think, serious. And we see once again, Chat, the most awkward chest bump in the history of Madden is the D. Croft Master Gamer chest bump. It's just Chat. We have talked about this, and this is just you know D. Croft is like we said, he's six five. You know, 280, and then we see him getting getting bumped by by you know the pterodactyl of Madden in Master Gamer. Ugh! And he bumped back. You know what I'm saying he bumped back. He bumped back. You know what I'm saying we're not going front like D. Croft didn't bump back. You know what I'm saying they bumped back. Whole lot of passion. You know what I'm saying boom. There it is. Master might have went. I don't know what Master went for. You guys tell me what Master went. It was like a uh. Uh, don't nobody run at me like that. All right, I don't care if I win a million dollars. Don't run at me with some weak. If you gonna run, I, I need you to knock me over or something. This guy, uh, uh, you know I'm saying I just I, that was a little much. But like I said, it was. It, I felt like Kid was playing good defense when he went to the three four. Uh, you could kind of sit on that three four pretty much the whole time, just hoping that you glitch around that tackle. Um. And for me, uh, he did not stick to that. You know, he went for the press. He went for everything. You know, where I feel like he could have kept playing a little. Not, I don't want to say safe because he's still blitzing seven people. But I feel like he could have at least covered up top, you know. Uh, and he didn't there. And boom. Gave up. And D. Croft put the right. And that's why we like to watch, Chet. 
that's why I like to watch Madden. D. Croft put the right play on the field. You know, he had went to that curl earlier. He had been going to post routes, drag, so so it made Kiv press to try to stop those underneath routes. You go up top. It's pretty much guessing the right play, and he got the better of Kiv on that drive, especially with the play to the, to, you know, to the, the streak for the touchdown. You know, and that's why we like, that's why we said it was such a good game because you get to watch what those guys would put on the field to try to beat certain defenses. You know, and, and D. Croft really, I mean, it really was nothing fluky about that game. You know, what, what, no real bad plays. Nothing to really complain about the game. It was just a, a good game. Honestly, it looked good because of that. No, nah, we're not going to make the excuse that Matt... If you get caught off guard by Master Gamer, that's a little rough. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what Moss catch was. What was the Moss catch? I don't remember. Oh, the oh the one where the, oh, the vertical route. Yeah, that, that was really a little nuts early in the game. I felt like it was kind of open. If, this is my point. If he would have dove, if he would have dove, caught it in front of the DB, which he probably does, you know, seven out of ten times, I mean, it wouldn't have been that big a deal. You know? I don't think it was wide open. It wasn't wide open. Let's not get crazy. It wasn't wide open. But he could have easily felt. He, like, we all play the game. You guys know what those diving catches are like. You know what I'm saying? So that's how I feel about that. But that was a great game, man. If you guys haven't watched the bag, you can check it on Compton 187 on YouTube. It has all the MCS games up for you guys to watch. It's definitely worth watching. It was fun to watch. So, and honestly, I've said this, we're going to see more games like that. The more we get the Ghost Man out there, the more we get uh, Kit. Uh, well, Kit is gone, but people like, you know, who, uh, who the hell else? Obviously, Skimbo, Buzz, Clef. We're going to see Ghost. Pavin actually is somebody that I don't even have on his list because he just won the Raiders. I don't know who he played in the Raiders finals, but Pavin is still there. We just saw Henry win the Eagles. Bunch of more passers, you know. Uh, and, and all these guys are going to be in bunch. And, and you know, and you, we complain about it's just the game. You know, the game is just not – There's and, and playing DC makes me realize that what percentage of the plays in the game are usable, are good – I would say that percentage is 5% or lower, honestly. The amount of just dog shit plays that are in the game make it to you get to this point where, you know, you're only going to run you know, a couple plays that are a couple formations that are good, honestly. You know? Decroft definitely is the State Farm, the State Farm representative in the mat. The only man with khakis. And I will tell you this. Decroft has to wear the khakis to every if he if he wears jeans or Nike sweats or whatever the hell he wants, he gotta go khakis every time. Khakis every time. We I have been notified EA made a statement. I will talk about this. Um I will talk about this. Uh it's Woo! Let's talk about problems game. Um we are gonna probably spend an hour talking about the the you know, just the fame Nate and this uh my gut thumbs or weapons, that guy and the things that he went through and everything. It's it's pretty it's pretty wild. But let's talk about problems game. Um Chad, I know you guys watch obviously you guys watch problem play. Now, um we go back to this. Uh problem lost. He lost the club series final for the Chargers to Madden Elite. Now, this is a play that was in question. Now, it happened earlier in the game where this guy took he motions and the cloud flat just like glitches on the other side of the field. Now, this is going to happen. This is in the third quarter. Problem is down 7-3. to three. A touchdown here would be devastating. So what happens is he motions this guy over, and it will and you'll see if you guys watch the cloud flat wants to run with him, but he like gets stuck and then glitches over there. So what happens is problem has to make sure there's no corner route over there, and so he can't work like he wants to, and he calls a timeout. Now, it makes sense. I would be upset about this shit, too. And it's the second time it happened. The first time, the first time for me is is what 
is it, the first time it's probably like, ooh, what the hell? The second time he's going across the screen, it's like, oh, what's going on here? You know what I'm saying? You know? But for me, I, 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 this guy had no idea what the hell he was doing with this motion. No idea. And, and the reason why I tell you he has no idea how to do this is because if you, chat, if you get somebody's cloud flat over here, right, chat, what play are you going to run? You're going to run an out route, a flat route, a zig route, a corner route, because now you know there's no cloud over there, right? You know what I'm saying? And, be, and so that's why Problem has to lurk this area because he figures, damn, he took my cloud over here. Damn, now I got to go over here and lurk over here. So he's got Telvin Smith. I believe that's who his linebacker is. So he's going to make sure this guy isn't on an out route and it stops him from lurking here. But the fact this guy put him on an in route lets me know that this guy has no fucking clue that this guy's going to glitch over there. You know what I'm saying? So that's the play that he ran. Those are the dots of Randy Moss. First down. Now, my question pretty much is how, what are the options here? You know what I mean? What, I feel like a rule, there has to be a rule. And if there's no rule, no rule set aside, like what, what can we really do? You know what I'm saying? Like, what are the options? I mean, I feel like there has to be an option to stop him or, or there has to be a rule in order to make a, you know, you can't just make a ruling up. Yeah, you can't make a ruling up on the fly. You can't just go out here and say, all right, we're going to give you the ball. We're going to give it, you these 10 yards back, give him first down because it was glitchy. You really can't. No, he had no idea what to do. He had no idea that was going to happen. None at all. Like, none at all. Like, it was just it was just fluky. Now, he does that motion every He did that motion four or five, six times in the game. It only happened twice. But he really had no idea that that was going to happen. He, he, he realized that, man, it might happen every once in a while or it could happen, but he wasn't prepared for it to happen. And because of that, that if he was prepared for it, he would have had a one-play touchdown on a corner route or something of that nature, you know? You know, but so for me, it comes down to what what are your options to, you know, for the game? I feel like if you can't, what can you do to essentially, like, like, what could you guys have wanted done? You know, what what could be done? You know, I don't think there's nothing you can do. I think, I think uh, maybe even during that game, could you make a ruling? Could you go ahead and say, all right, if it happens again, you can't snap the play, problem got to go off sides, and then just decline it. Could you make a ruling mid-game? Right, Chet? That's what I'm asking. Could you make that ruling mid-game? Could you say, all right, we can't do anything about it happening in the last play, but if it happens again... Go off size, decline it, reset the play. You know, and I feel like there's there has to be somebody, literally there has to be somebody in charge, like there has to be, this is the guy in charge of rules. You know, and we have to put his utmost, put our utmost faith into that person to make these decisions, you know. Yeah, but, not, but yeah, you're telling me can't motion, but if it only worked two out of the eight times, it only happened two out of the eight times that that play went down, uh, yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe now all of a sudden, all of a sudden, uh, maybe that does hurt his offense. So you're right. Maybe they can't do that. Rules can't be updated mid turn, and that's adjust. And this is one thing that's crazy about this tournament is that this tournament is lasting four months. So the game is going to change immensely. The and with much, the way the cards change, the way the abilities change, the game changes more this year than any other year. You know, with the patches, the abilities. But in general, the game is going to change so much. You know what I'm saying? That's how the Henry Henry in the chat. Where did we get a cheesesteak? Henry, I made you. I made some maps for you for tomorrow. I'm going to send them to you. I didn't want to send them to you while you're playing. I didn't want to jinx you or no shit like that. Plus, if you didn't win, I wasn't going to hit you up. Uh, because when people lose, I don't hit them up. I feel like that's corny. Uh, ain't no way. Henry didn't go to De La Sandro's. That shit is all the way uptown. Uh... If he was down the link, he probably should have just went to Chickies and Pete's, honestly. Um, Chickies and Pete's would have held you down, really. Yeah, Skimbo, people uh, people definitely... Um, now, nah, Geno's and, and Pat's, it's good, but it's kind of ass at the same time. Jim's ain't bad. On South Street, yeah, it's kind of ass.
Nah, you don't get Wiz, bro. You get either Prevalone or American, man. Ken, I don't know what you're saying. Yeah, with, but Henry is 16. He probably likes Wiz. Yeah, Jim, Jim's on South Street, not terrible. But I got, like I said, Henry, I got you. I got you a mat. Like I said, you wake up tomorrow, 8 a.m. You go to, you know what I'm saying? Well, maybe not 8, but you know, like 10 a.m. You go to Reading Terminal. You go to the Reading Terminal market. You like, you, Reading Terminal is like, as we're talking to Henry, the Philadelphia Eagles Club Series champion. Reading Market is like a bunch of little ass markets in one. It's like a mall, but it's just food spots, right? You guys probably had. I've seen these in other places across the country, um, but it's like it's like a I don't want a big ass square mall, and it's just got little food shops everywhere, and you can get whatever the hell you want. I would say get a little roast pork. I don't know if you dine on the swine. Me myself, I enjoy the swine. Roast pork. I forget what the hell the, the pork spot called in, in a writing terminal, but it's so fire. It's so damn good. I gotta figure out what it's work. <clears throat> yeah, so go to Reading Market, check that out. And I said from Reading Market you could walk to the art museum. It's probably like a mile. You know, but you it depending on what the weather's like, if it's cold, I don't think I don't think you wanna walk that far. But I I've I've definitely walked from the Reading Market up to the art museum, probably about a mile, mile and a half. Denix, yeah, that's it. Totag's got me. Denix, go to Denix in Denix in Reading Terminal is fire. You know what I'm saying? No, just eat the whiz. It, it, cool, you're 16 years old, bro. You want to like cheese whiz. You know what I'm saying? That's what kids, kids like that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Don't get no pizza steak. That's childish. But anyway. But like I said, with the man, with the problem, man, it's hard to make a rule mid tournament. Uh, but as I, 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 I was, man, I, I, I honestly starting to hate the hate the club series over and over and over. I got, I got you, Tommy. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, that goes to the problem situation that went down. Now what we want to talk about? Beast mode. Now I, you got man. This goes back to Truzy Club. Shout out to Truzy, man. If you're in the chat, Truzy, I'm proud of Truzy. Made a live event. Um, we, we talked about how he looked. Wasn't the best. Wasn't the best drip. Wasn't the worst. Nah, wasn't the best. Wasn't the worst. You know what I'm saying? Bro, Leo, I, I mean, you got to I'm not saying go to the art museum. You go to the steps and take a picture with the Rocky statue. Like, you don't go to... Unless you want to go to the art museum. I don't think a 16-year-old want to go to the art museum. The Franklin Institute, you might go there. But, yo, you go up the Rocky Steps. You take a picture. And you take your little jaw, your little belt. Say, I won the Philly Club. I'm on the Rocky Steps. Take a picture next to Rocky. That's tough. That's what you do. You don't go to the art museum. The art museum is going to take five hours. He got a flight at 3 o'clock. What the hell? He got to leave there, too? You know what I'm saying? Yo. I know what I'm doing, man. Now, I asked him, if he wasn't 16, we could have, you know what I'm saying? He might be out in the streets tonight, but he, you know what I'm saying? He's a young boy. He can't, he can't really even do anything tonight. He probably already back asleep. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you can take a picture with Rocky. Yeah. Henry still got the boot cuts. I mean, Jesus. But anyway, what's about Beast Mode, man? I'll tell you, have you guys seen... A player more dominant than Beast Mode in, in, in a two-game stretch of Madden. Now I'll tell you. Now, he's probably the first. Is he the first? Like, actually, what, what's the word I want to say? Actually, known man player. Actually, you know, accomplished man player to go with no. Listen, to go with no quarterback. Beast Mode is the only. You know. Known man player to go with no quarter. Has anybody else run no quarterback? I think it's pretty nuts to do it, but at the end of the day, I have not seen anybody. Oh yeah, Volt. Yeah, Volt went no quarterback too. But Volt, Volt wasn't. Volt wasn't out there with the shit I saw Beast Mode with. Chat. Volt was not high power. Beast Mode was high octane. Like GGs. See you later. See you later. See you later. You know. Yeah, Vol had no abilities, just on defense. 
And that's pretty nuts. But we will tell you. Oh, Shazier had 99? What is Shazier had 99? And I don't know how my man had my man had the big stars. I didn't learn how to get the big stars. That shit was tough. Father figure, no, Beast Mode, I'll be honest, Beast Mode was probably uh he, he definitely was the most high powered person. Yeah. Beast mode, I, absolutely. And we were saying, chat. <clears throat> we were saying this, um, that the Rams Club series was one of the best ones. You know what I'm saying? Oh, that's pretty tough. 96 speed. My man had a 96 speed Shazier tight end. I mean, he should have caught that pass, though. He should I No, I'm telling you, I don't be tired, but when you talk so much and when you, you use a lot of oxygen talking, it's definitely, definitely makes you yawn and stuff. That's pretty tough. Jesse, you sleep. You already know. Get your notifications together. Tighten up. And you two can get your notifications together. If you're not, twitch.tv slash dub dot. Put them notifications on, man. But, uh, yeah, like I said, beast mode, between this Joe Thomas shit, and, and Henry's in the chat. Henry, I don't want to hear no more shit about the run being weak. Because they was out there fucking you up a little bit. They was out there. If, 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 they, if, they, if these kids would just deep half somebody once in a while, we would have been in long games. They would have been in long games. If, these, if, 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 if the doctor just knew how to deep half one person, I'm saying, I, they, he'd have been in some long games. I don't know, bro. Nah, Leo, I don't know. I don't know. Henry, Henry, listen, in the game right now, I might take beast mode over everybody. But at the same time, I'll tell you this about beast mode. I feel like you always need a quarterback. At least like the 30 cap Brady, somebody that can at least throw a, a, a drag or a quick out route or a whip route or something like that. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like not having, like, sometimes you'll have, you know, 20 seconds left and you're at the at the 50-yard line. You don't have any timeouts. You can't run the ball. Like, it's just not situational football. I feel like you need a quarterback, you know. And I feel like, honestly, the way Beast Mode's team was set up, you could legitimately not have wide receivers. But if it's time to pass, okay, let me put both of my running backs at wide receiver, you know. When, yo, Henry got thrown around. What are you talking, like, what, Bobby V had 30 points. And Bobby V, I'll be honest, I lost to Bobby, Bobby V had no fucking clue what he was doing. He was just running counters. Bruh. Henry knew how to get free. He got thrown around. They just, they just honestly, just Henry just scored too easily. You know, that's all it was. He just scored too easily. That's his play. Yeah, he was running the worst. Bro, he was running the worst fucking run plays ever. Touchdown. Touchdown. Beast Mode. Beast Mode had the most high-powered Joe Thomas ever. Beast Mode had Joe Thomas playing every position. If he could put Joe Thomas at quarterback, he'd have got a snap in a quarterback. You know what I'm saying? Bobby V had no... And Beast Mode, this shit is... I'm telling you, right now, give me Beast Mode. Give me the Beast. Give me the Beast. Well, like I said, when you when, when you get to the next level, now obviously beating Truzy and being sickened and being... I, I Like I said, I picked Nene. I bet on Nene. I think Nene's a really good man player. Uh, For me... I think when you go to that next, that final 32, and you play in the next level of players, you're going to need a quarterback. And I appreciate it. He told me that. We, he told me that, Leo. He told me, uh, yo, you want to see beast mode offense? Beast, I, it's not, it, it go too fast. I don't know what to show you. It's just a touchdown every play. All right, so my man 49 says, the DB is purposely running Joe Thomas. So what are we going to make EA develop a software for the DBs to run in circles? 
that's where you got to have some user. I honestly feel like user is, user is the number one thing in run defense, I think. Probably not even, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think Nene's good. And, and and Henry said that, and, and to me it's like this with run defense. I feel like every run that somebody gives up, you can find like, damn, I could have did this better. I could have had a better user on this play, you know? I, I that 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 I can't lie. That that nasty streak stuff is stupid as hell. That nasty streak shit is stupid as hell. And that it is, but I I feel like if you have decent user, yeah, player. This is how run defense work. Players run to the blockers. It's like they see the blockers more than they see the running back. I'm saying no honestly I thought I thought um Bobby V Bobby V played better defense than not that he played good defense but he played better defense than uh Tony and he, he obviously was more high but Bobby V was just I, every time I turned around touchdown and that's when the stream was shitty so you didn't even know what happened you just looked down at seven points you know So last, but we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about um, people getting banned and stuff. But I said Beast Mode, like, if he had, I think, I think no matter what, I think he should definitely have a quarterback. I I originally thought now Beast Mode now, now yeah let's let's go take a look at Beast Mode just dominate like this shit was I, I I was just blown away like he just drug people, like just drug people. It wasn't even it wasn't even a contest. Like, I don't know who we would even want to watch. Now, I personally, I do think that Nene is a good man player. I do. Like, as much as we talk about, um, much as we talk about, a lot of players will blame. And this is what people do. They blame, oh, that guy doesn't have good run. I think Nene is a good man player. He, I mean, he's not the best, obviously. Um, but I do think, um, as we see, Joe Thomas, this is the first, this is Nene versus Beast Mode chat, uh, yeah, this shit was super high power. Now this wasn't one of the more high powered ones, as we see Joe Thomas, Joe Thomas just like, like what? I mean, this one wasn't even bad because he took Palmolo and took Apke. I tell you what, th nobody used Joe Thomas as good as Beast Mode. And, and one thing that Beast Mode did do, I want to see Beast Mode get back on offense. I don't want to watch. I just want to watch the beat. And this was kind of wild going for the. Oh no, he punted the ball. So here we go, Beast. Here we go, Joe Thomas playing tight end again. Let's motion him out. I, I mean, I don't understand. Oh, we're motioning him this way. And we say this, man. This is what EMB ran in the in the jukebox. I will tell you when we. This is where we go to. Beast mode was actually good with jukebox. Most of the other people. Now, who else have you guys seen? Who else? Who else have you guys seen? Um, use jukebox this weekend or this week and was like, damn, that guy's good at jukebox. Have y'all seen anybody else? That y'all thought, damn, he's good at jukebox. A beast mode was probably, I mean, see Anthony Barr there making the tackle. Um, that's why you had a secure tackler. Because I talked about Jay Bird being completely ass with jukebox. He was. Um, now we get to the point where it's like somebody's really good. Uh, I didn't even think Bobby V was good at it. I definitely didn't think that dude Tony on the Eagles Club Series. I thought he was terrible with jukebox. No. Nah. So third and three. Let's put Joe Thomas. Boom. And that's what you get to. Like, when you see uh, this type of thing, which is good stick. You know, because you don't want to get juke, so he clicks on him straight to the middle, but he doesn't juke him. He just runs by him. Like, this type of shit is like what the game, what Beast Mode was like, all right, I'm just keep running. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, dominating wasn't the word, honestly.
There goes Joe. Oh, he didn't get him right there. And I didn't think, what do you guys think about the two jukebox guys? I thought at first it was, uh, I thought he was tripping. But then when I watched him play, I was like, all right, this definitely is it. You know? Because he ran every play. And I always thought, man, he could get a, a just a, a budget running back, like a Pollard or somebody to get in there and get a breather. But it worked out. These aren't even the high power plays. Where are like the one hitter quitters? Here we go. One hitter quitter time. Oh, no. Nini got the ball. Once again, Nini passing against. Like, these aren't even the one hitter quitters. Uh, his defense was his defense was just covered. It was just 3-4. Let's not, I mean, let's not get carried away. You know what I'm saying? Hey, Bobby V, my guy, man. Good, you, good, good fight, man. Good fight. One hitter quitter time. Oh, no. He didn't get a one hitter. Yeah, like it's not like it's rocket science, you know. But when you're scoring so easily running the ball, it's very easy to play defense. And this is a situation where it's like, yes, I wish Beast Mode would have a quarterback. But he went to the jet sweep with Joe Thomas out leading the way. One hitter quitter. GG's. <laughs> like, Joe Thomas, boop. He probably could have scored with any blocker out there, but yeah, Sicken was got. I think Sicken was the one that got like super flooded, huh? Yeah, this is this. I mean, it's easy to play defense like this. I'm up 21 points, and this this goes into real football chat. Like when you're up 21 points, it's easy as shit to play defense like this. You don't have to worry about the run. You don't have to worry about bubble screens. You don't have to worry about hitches. You don't have to worry about shit. He can throw anything on the field right now. You're going to make the tackle. He doesn't have jukebox. He has W's Adrian Peterson in the backfield. He has no ability to break a tackle because he doesn't have an ability. And because when you don't have abilities, all these guys are fucking Ray Lewis and they can tackle anybody. One, then he has no ability on his quarterback, so his quarterback has to snap, throw the ball. So you talk about this is the easiest position to play defense. Up 21, you're scoring one play touchdowns on a run game. As Beast Mode scored another one player. You know what I mean, Chet? And, 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 and it's easy to play defense like this. This was what was tough. I don't know how he did this. And I'm going to watch. Strong eye. Audible. Now now look where Joe Thomas is. Joe Thomas is out here at wide receiver. You know what he's going to do out there? Boop. Boop. Jukebox. GG's. This was the... And we talk about uh, the difference between Beast Mode and, and other players. Is It was this play right here. Audible and from strong eye to strong eye, other strong eye. What the fuck strong eye? I, I don't even know what playbook has 400 strong eyes in it. Obviously, probably Oakland. As we strong eye wing, audible to strong tight stretch, and, and all of a sudden, boop, Joe Thomas becomes the wide receiver. And watch him, boop, boop, GG's. And we're off to the races. Like, what's a man to do about that? It's almost like you have to user this corner and, like, back him up so Joe Thomas keeps chasing him or some shit. Because if you let him get pancaked, pancaked, I mean, nothing else you can do, man. And that's why the show, that's why his that's why his offense was good. And I'll tell you, man, that one audible, that one audible was different from what everybody. Obviously, everybody had the audibles. Everybody has motion in Joe Thomas and things like that. But uh, that audible that he had was different, honestly. And I will tell you, this This one makes me mad. If I was a runner, this 1,000% would be my office. These runners need to stop being cute and stop thinking they can pass. Beast Mode, who actually won a belt passing the ball, said, you know what? <laughs> you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to come out here and pound some shit. So it's completely different as we see a first and 10, first play of the game, motion in the wrong player, well, the right player, boop. One jukebox, and we're off to the races. Simple as that, man. He don't care about your secure tackler. He don't care. I don't know what. Is this 3-4 three, run, run defense? Juke. Jalen Ramsey's on the ground. GG's. 
You know what I'm saying? So it's a lot of runners. Now, Chad, I will ask you this now. Have you seen one person that uses Hot Route Master that can pass the ball? Here we go. Back to the beast mode. As we watch the beast mode plays right here as he caught a pick, have you seen one person that uses Hot Route Master that can pass? You ever wonder why the best passers in the world? Who are the best passers in the world? As Beast Mode, as as Joe Thomas, just bruh. Once again, Joe Thomas out wide. This run defense is bad. No, Niner, you can't pass, bro. Oh, Henry was wearing joggers and they put him in the Buster jeans. <laughs> I mean, Joe Thomas, um. Yeah, Sigmund was kind of sick right there. Beast Mode feeling himself. You know what I'm saying? He's a man. His run game is strong. And Sigmund was just chucking picks. Back to the Joe Thomas show. He's still chucking people. I mean, this shit was high powered, man. I And, like, the one thing about the joke. Joe, Ski I feel the same way. Joke isn't blind. And if it was up to Joke, he would never pass. You know, yeah, Journey isn't blind, but he not. You know what I'm saying, but you think about the best passers, man. It's a reason why they don't have Hot Route Master. You know. Oh, Sicken's a baller, bro. He is a baller. Let's just call that how it is, man. Once again, where do we see Joe Thomas at? at the slot wide receiver right now. You know he ain't. Oh, he ain't blocked nobody right there. Right, he might have throw that one out of the playbook though. He might have thrown that one out of the playbook. But I say all this, I'm, I'm cool with watching more running plays. I say all that to say. <laughs> Thank you, Chad. I appreciate you guys. But like I said, I say all that to say, Beast Mode was the most dominant player, I thought, out there, honestly. Um, But let's get to Cowboys. Now, you guys watch the Cowboys, right? Now, I will tell you this, man. Good to see my man, Mutt Gruber, on the, on the broadcast booth. Um, but I I, I, re, I go back to this, this, this. I go back to this feeling I have that. Listen, Chet. Let me tell you this. I, I feel like real life football p people suck at broadcasting man like guru know what he's talking about but the other guys like bruh it's not even about to be a boring but one the one thing about this and we'll watch i watch a couple plays of this broadcast because i want to get the one thing about this as he blew up this pass and we talked about this is that um one the first thing i'm gonna say about this is we we look at these dudes faces more often than not. I did not know this persistent dude was really 4'11". Four, four but we watch these guys more than we watch the game, which is cool. And I would tell you probably about, I want, you know, maybe 10 to 20% of this at the most. It's, I'm not going to say they're awful. One, then they had the the, lev, the audio levels were nuts. Like the volume of the game were through the roof. You know what I'm saying, chat? The volume of the game was through the roof. Was through the, uh, whatchamacallit, was through the roof. Because you couldn't hear anything. You know, all you could hear was the game sound. Right, chat? If you guys watch this. So, it's like, and I don't know who drew this. Obviously, I think, I guess, the complexity people. But at some point, you got to see the levels and see where they're at and lower the game sound. You guys know, uh, when I when I play game sound, I always ask you guys, man, what's the levels look like? Um, how's it sound? You know, camera was definitely on the players more than uh, the game. Uh, we see Joe Thomas out here getting nasty. He didn't block anybody right there, but Sean Lee on the field? Jesus Christ. Now, I'm disappointed in Dallas because my man Kerry got popped. Um, yeah, that's something about, we're definitely outside. The outside shit is cool. I feel like it got a little bit cold down there. I'm not sure. It is in Texas. Uh, I would assume it was probably 60 degrees, something. But I, w I don't really mind it being outside. 
know what I'm saying? I don't really know. You know. What do you guys think as far as being outside? Like, I, I just... I think the atmosphere is more important than the... Uh, if it was popping, uh, if it was popping, I wouldn't mind it being outside. Long as I'm playing outside and the other guy playing outside, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, as long as we play in the same condition, oh, well, we see Joe Thomas, let's we'll see how nasty he gets. Nasty. <laughs> now, really, in this situation, for this guy, persistent or not persistent? Who's the other guy? User God. This is a situation where I, I would be on. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be doing the quarterback runs. You know, I don't think the quarterback... This dude is really 4'11", bro. Like, I, I persistent, my guy, man. Little Sebastian Telfair action, Jag, you feel me? I mean, it's not, it's not that cold. I think I would... But then again, I'll tell you this. I'm, this might be where he... No, I don't know if this... Yeah, this is where he coughs it up. And we see my man, who has a clear lane to the end zone, pitch the ball back for all the chaloops. Now, I, I I respect you, man. This is a play I would make on Weekend League. Now, Chet, this is a play I would make on Weekend League. We flip that back. Yeah, go ahead, Palomar. Now, in fairness, in fairness, Chet, Palomar was right behind him. Oh, I think he bumped Pop. See, I think like the guard or one of the linemen bumped Palomalu right before he could catch it. I don't even know if he pitched to the Palomalu. This is pretty nuts. I think no. I think uh, I, I think Lamar would have caught him. Yeah, that's pretty wild. Oh my God, Deion Jones definitely, <laughs> Deion Jones definitely went over it, bro. He'd have made a play though. Now, chat, if he'd have actually hit Palomar, like when he pitches this though, let's see when he pitches it. This all he sees, chat, chat. This is all he sees on the field. Now it was dumb as shit, but let's really look at what he saw. Like, I'm like seriously, like, like, I, yeah, he he put it all out there. My my point is, why would you not pitch it? Now I'm assuming that's full clowny. Full clowny is what, Chad? 87 speed. I I think in that situation, you see Clowney's stamina. For some reason, does it look like Cl Clowney's tired as fuck? But but Lamar Jackson got full stamina. First of all, is that not crazy? Like is that not crazy? With look at look at Lamar Jackson, who literally just ran the ball, and now we can look at Jadavion Clowney, who just picked the ball up. Why is Jadavion Clowney one tick away from dying, and Lamar Jackson just came off the bench? That makes a little bit, little bit wild. You know. But I'm saying, yeah, oh for sure, you definitely don't pitch this. You we definitely don't pitch this. But if this on the screen, is it that wild, chat? Is it that wild to pitch this fucker? Like, look at what he saw when he pitched that. Now, this is what I'm saying. Let's be real. Persistent not winning the tournament. He not going to win 100K. You know what I'm saying? He not going to win 100K. But if he would have pitched this bitch and took it to the crib, chat. Chat, simply legendary. It would have been simple. It would have been one of the most legendary plays ever. One of the most legendary player plays ever. I don't know. Uh, but like I said he did pitch it. 
uh, and things did not work out well when he pitched it, and Deion Jones didn't get it. Let's see the call. What was the call right like? God damn. See what I mean? How loud this shit is? Hold on. Slide to safety. <laughs> Persistence. How did that happen? Persistence wanted that, that happen. Uh -huh. No way to do it, man. You have to put everybody up in the box. You know, hope somebody makes a tackle. Yours is going to go ahead and let this go down to the two minute warning while he gets those hand warmers working. <laughs> Yeah, being cold, I'll tell you that, Chad. Being cold I'm sure what is you're doing in, in Madden in this situation. Van Der Esch, Sean Lee, everybody that can tackle and hit holes uh, well, I'll put them in the game right now. Right now. Lamar right there being patient. There's oh, Troy. Oh, there's Troy. Guys, it had to Cody. happen eventually. Oh, oh the what is he doing? With the pitch back. What is going on? Time to the <laughs> <laughs> Did we not say the pitch would get him in trouble? Said, I don't know. I don't know. And and user said no. I mean, the, the, it was just the, it, honestly the biggest problem with this was one they show these dudes faces all the time, and uh, two the game volume was way too loud. Yeah, persistent did like he having a good time. I mean, blocking when you four eleven, bro, you go have a good time in life for everything. You know what I'm saying. Yeah, being, having your hands cold is probably one of the worst feelings in Madden, honestly, or in video gaming. You guys all play games. But your hands being cold is kind of rough. You know what I'm saying? All right. Um, so it seems like a lot of people are getting banned. You know, uh, a lot of people are getting banned. And if you guys haven't, if you guys have been under a rock... Chat, if you guys have been under a rock for um for a week, um you know the club series happened. Uh, the Chiefs was probably the the first. The Chiefs was the first club series that popped off this week, um and Tony beat uh Sirius Mo, uh and we go to the next game. Fame Nate beat Space Jam, I believe. Uh, he beat somebody. I want to say Space. I don't. Know. Yeah. But Fame Nate won. Uh, now, Chat, I will tell you this. Um, I will tell you this. I, I never saw Fame Nate before. I've never met Fame Nate before. I've never talked to him. I'm, I don't know him from a can of paint. Um, now, I will tell you this as well. Um, I don't know if you guys know them from a can of paint. You know? Uh, when I, all right, I'm, I'm looking up these tweets, too. All right, yeah, I, I, I understand everything that's going on. I don't need to look at any more tweets. I don't need to look at any... I know I've talked to everybody involved. I know what's going on. People have reached out to me to talk to you guys about this. Because, um... All right, so Fame Nate won. Now, I don't know if you guys... I didn't know who Fame Nate was. I didn't know what he looked like. I didn't know him at all. I didn't know where he was from. I didn't even know his gamer tag. Uh, you know, first, f first of all, I'll tell you this right now. I don't want to talk about is he got free wins. Everybody cheats. If you have the ability to cheat, you will cheat. That's just, I don't think there's a human being walking this world that hasn't cheated some way, somehow, in Madden. Period. Simple plan. So I don't want to even go down that road. I don't want any of you guys to bring that up. Um, the chat is a sub only in the chat because, you know, I want to talk to you guys, the ones that have been supporting me. I don't want none of the trolls around. Because um, uh, I'm not trying to hear with the... With the uh, I'm not trying to hear the trolls. Put it like that. If you want to be a troll, you're going to pay your $5 to troll. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, this is for you guys. But I was saying the, the cheating thing has to go. That has to. I don't want. If if you are complaining about the cheating thing, you are not amongst this. You, you're just not hip. You're just not. You, you just got to open your brain, open your eyes. You know, it's, it's, it's so far from what we're talking about here now. So I don't want that ever brought up. And first of all, let me tell you another thing. The, the snitches, y'all are, are crummy too. Not not the snitches on the whole, you know, the, the allegations of his past. I'm talking about the he got free wins snitches. God, y'all are weird. Like, who snitch? Like, oh, he got free wins. Who did it? I think Salty did it. Like, bro, what? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's just corny. But anyway, 
That's not a, so. Anyway, it turns out this is what happened. I don't know how old this guy, fame Nate guy is. I want to say now. I read. I read about this. Uh, I read about his whole case. I read about all these different uh, allegations. I read about all the different you know sicknesses that people have. I read about so much stuff, so I didn't come on here sounding stupid. You know that was one of the biggest things I wanted to do. So what happened was. Free, all right, Fame Nate is 23 years old, okay? He's 23 years old. It's a young man. Now, if you guys watch the club series, Fame Nate, I will tell you, was probably the most well-spoken Madden player we have ever heard as far as interviews, right? Seriously, I definitely did spend... I, Luke, I'm not playing. Because I, I didn't want to sound... I didn't want to be wrong. I didn't want to sound stupid because one thing I hate, you guys know, when I won, you know, everybody drugged me. And, and, and it's probably 700 people in here probably 650 of you guys had no idea who I was when I had won. You know, and everybody judged me off, you know, some shit that was from the past and without knowing who I was and without knowing me. And it killed me. It's the reason, ultimately, it's the reason why I have no drops in my Twitch. It's the reason I'm not a coach on man. It's the reason I'm not doing it in this commentary. It is still holding me back to this day. You know what I'm saying? So for me, I understand what it's like. Uh, I understand what it's like for people to instantly judge you um, without knowing anything about you, you know. So naturally, this will always be something that I I am against. Something I you know take a second to step back and say, let me before I judge this person, I am going to see. I'm going to do my best to figure out what happened and before I judge him. Now, the entire man community has the opposite view. The opposite view. I'm saying, and one thing that you guys take from me is that when I when I don't rush don't rush to judge somebody or I don't rush to you know throw them under the buses that means I'm sticking up for them or I'm you know you know standing by them and, and saying what they did was okay I don't know why you guys take it that way you know I, I feel like it can only be one thing or the other chat you know and I feel like it's not that case just because I don't you know want to burn this guy at the stake that I never met doesn't mean I support anything this person has done you know, and I want to make sure y'all guys know that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, and, and this is what I'll ask. You said people, you know, and uh, King, whenever, if you pop up, you're going to be on there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's not about what, yeah, and that's the thing, and I don't want, and that's one thing, and that alone, and, and people think I'm just defending this person. That alone lets you guys know how things can be taken out of context. Now, allegedly, <clears throat> for those of you guys that don't know, Fame Nate is 23 years old. Allegedly, when he was not probably 20 or 21 or something, what he did was he got some high school girl. I want to say she was high school. I don't know how old the girl was. We were never told how old the woman was. All we heard was high school, right? <clears throat> I need some damn water. Right, chat? All we know is that he got some girl from high school and he got some nudes of this chick. You know what I'm saying? Diet Pepsi, man. Get you some. But anyway. So, <clears throat> he was 21 years old. He got some nudes of a chick in high school. And he extorted this girl to get more nudes. You know, and this is what he literally went to jail. <clears throat> this is why he went to jail. So the kid, I understand, KD, water is in the other room. I don't want to get up and go walk and get the other room. All I got right there is a two liter. You know what I'm saying? That's all I got. Now, I don't know how he got the pictures. It said he hacked the computer or something. I, I honestly, I don't know. I, I'm not a hacker. I'm... <clears throat> I don't even know what the hell that means. Hack. What does that mean? I, I don't know. But anyway, he got the pictures. He told the chick, I want some more nudes. Um, And the chick went to the police and he wound up getting arrested. And I guess this was harassment. And um, he went to jail. I, I don't know what article you read. I, I read the one article everybody had. Now all of a sudden y'all got super. Yeah, that 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 the, the hack shit to me was fucking like, all right, dude. 
I don't, I, listen, I don't want, this is people just interpret how things go and all of a sudden he was, <clears throat> listen, but I, this thing is not what I want to get into. I don't want to get into, okay, she was this old, it, it, you know, it, I'm not going to tell y'all, oh, that was, wasn't as bad because she was 17. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, it was some freak ass bad shit, right? So at the end of the day, he did some freak ass, like some wrong shit, right? <clears throat> Listen, no, the the boy shit. The, I just, uh, to me, I think is is all I got was one one article I read as much as I could. I didn't see nothing about how old these chicks were. All I saw was they in high school. Then I saw some stuff that he said he was doing. When uh, <coughs> damn, my throat is killing me. When he was fifteen. Now I will tell you this. So what I looked up, I read the whole time. First of all, y'all, everybody do around this word ped- pedophile, right, Chet? That's all y'all do around this word pedophile. Now, <clears throat> if you look up the word pedophile, which I did, and I read about the different diseases that pedophilia is, what pedophilia is is, you know, the attraction of a man to a prepubescent child. What that means is that before they even hit puberty, this is talking about a 12-year-old, like a little fucking kid. You know what I'm saying? So for me, I never thought none of this really went into that. And I think that that word alone is a little scary. And I thought people... And I feel like when I was talking about this and we were talking about it, we were throwing around... Everybody was throwing it around without really knowing what it was. You know what I'm saying? No, seriously, because I I, I feel like that makes shit sound so much worse. It, ma- it makes it seem like some fr- super, super freak nasty thing. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> you know, and I didn't, I didn't think it was that, that super net. And when you throw that word around, you can't really even talk about it. You know what I'm saying? Once you throw that word around, it's not something you could talk about. <clears throat> yeah, you know what I'm saying? I feel like that word, once you get categorized as that, you some shit where you shouldn't be around anybody. You know, and I didn't think somebody that, you know, I didn't think that what I read in the same in the same allegations or the same article that you guys read, I didn't think it was that. And I didn't want to try to argue that with anybody because all of a sudden it's like, oh, y'all defend you defending them. I didn't think it was that. I didn't think it was a pedophile type shit. Um, I think pedophilia is some super freak nasty stuff. Um, it's some super um, sensitive topic. And I didn't think this was that. And I think as soon as you throw that word around, it makes it look a thousand times worse. You know? <clears throat> okay, no, what the article said was he did something with a boy. All he did was, see, now this, now Windy City Bull says, I have to read the whole, I read the entire article 16 times. I wouldn't get up here and talk to you guys about it without reading it. What happened was he got some boy to do a sexual act. That's all I said. Now we're going to assume it's some wild shit, you know? But whatever it was, it was when he was 15 years old. Which also cannot be pedophilia. You cannot be a pedophile if you are under the age of 16. That's like the medical determination. If you are under the years of 16 years old, if you are 15, you cannot be a pedophile. That is legally the, the medical. Under 16, it cannot happen. So, Wendy City Boy, you are wrong in that. <clears throat> you know, that's not pedophilia. It's not. But anyway, so it, it, it made this kid look absolutely terrible. Now... At the end of the day, it was about extorting high school w- girls, right? When he was 21, which is sick. You know, it really is uh, some sick things. But, I mean, I don't know about you guys. I can think about, I never did anything like this. You know, nothing like that. Um, and and this man went to jail for two and a half years. Now, you go to jail for two and a half years, I will tell you, I went to jail for 24 hours, and it changed my entire look on life. I was around people that I had no business being around. You know, you think you're tough. You think you're like a, a man. If you go to jail, it opens your eyes on what type of human beings live in this world. You know, and I went to jail for 24 hours. 24 hours. This man went to not said prison. Big boy jail. Yes, big boy jail, that's probably way different than what the hell I was in. So this man went there for two and a half years 
for extorting these high school girls for nude pictures, which is some sick shit. Now, I'll be real, Fame Nate don't look like a guy that gets a lot of ass. You know what I'm saying? So, for me, he's probably a creep. And he's a super creep and did some super creepy shit. Uh, so, he went to jail for two and a half years. Um, wins this, uh, accomplishes this thing in Madden, and then everybody drags him. Right, chat? You know what I'm saying? Creepy is definitely the word. No, I'm just saying, creepy is definitely the word. Yeah, I've, I've, look, 24 hours, all I had to see, Lynn, y'all, been there for 24 hours, and for me, 24 hours legitimately changed my life. I said, I was sitting in there for 24 hours at, in the roundhouse in Philly. This wasn't like, this was like, it was the holding cell of holding cells, right? And I seen people that I was like, yo, I don't belong around these people. These are different type of people, like different type of people. Like, I don't want any smoke. Like, no smoke. I'm not this type of person. I'm staying out of trouble. I'm cool. Yeah, so... So, for me personally, I feel like two and a half years, you could have a whole outlook. You could have a whole new outlook on life. Shit. If I went to jail for two and a half years, I don't know what I'd be doing. Um, So, I just felt... I, I just felt... Just some of the ways... Some of y'all... Like, some people were just talking, like... And this is one thing for me is, like... I, this fame nation, shit, it does not affect me at all. I don't care what the hell he does. I don't care if he competes. I don't care if he works at Walmart. I don't care if he becomes the CEO of some hamburger franchise. I don't care. It affects me not a little bit. And some people have so much anger and so much just hatred and just so much negative energy about another human being that literally does not affect them at all. This person, what happens to this person, it has no effect on you at all. Does not change your life. You have to wake up the next day. You have to do this, that, and third. And yet people are that upset about it. It drives me crazy. And people are that negative to this man that went to jail for two and a half years and just, he can't do shit, get him out of here, blah, blah, blah. And people spend so much time trying to bring this person down is crazy about something that has no effect on them. Like, no, it's crazy, just no effect. It does if this man was under the jail or if this man was president of the United States, your life would not change at all. You wouldn't be happier, you wouldn't be more upset, whatever it may be, it does not change you. So why do we have to be this goddamn negative all the time about some, some kid that just did something really good for himself? You know what I'm saying? Now, for me, it's like, okay, he did some sick shit. You know what I'm saying? It's not, and and now we get to the point where now you have to make a decision, chat. Now, EA has to make, now you know EA is going to side with whatever helps their money. They don't give a shit about me, you, Jeffrey, Joe, Thomas, Anthony. They don't care about none of us. They care about what affects their brand, what affects their business, what affects their shareholders. That's all they're going to care about. And that's the only decision they're going to make. So, EA also knows this. Now, this is a PR This is a PR nightmare. For, like I was. I was an absolute PR nightmare for them. The same, I don't want to even say the same thing, but I, a PR nightmare. You know what I'm saying? But for me, look like this. And so what they have to do is they are a huge business. They have PR people. How can we control this the best? For me, it was like, how can we punish him? Because you can't punish these people. You can't. You cannot punish people for shit they did in the past. Because ultimately, it looks bad on you because you just let them play. You just let, you just put a camera in this guy's face and said, you are the man. Congratulations. Hippity ha ha. Patted him on the ass and said, good job. But you can't turn around the next day and then find that man. You can't turn around the next day and say, damn, that man's not allowed to play anymore. You can't do that. Just like they couldn't do it to me, they could not find me for shit I did seven years ago. For things I said seven years ago, they couldn't find me. But they still had a PR nightmare. So what did they do? They found a way to find me for shit I did after the man bowl, for tweets I made after the man bowl. In the two-day span, they find me for that rather than turning around and finding me for the shit I did seven years ago. Because they, they can't find you for shit you did that long ago. They knew that was common knowledge. 
What, what Fannie Mae went through was common knowledge. Billy Bob with his laptop found the shit about, about Fannie Mae. So EA can't be mad about that. So now we get to this situation. We talked about mine. They're going to find a way to save their ass. Now EA, now EA can't just go ahead and ban Fame Nate, right? They got to set some type of standard, some type of rule. They have to find some type of, you know what I'm saying? They, they got to find some type of, they can't just ban this one person. So what do they do? Let's look at all the club series winners, right? This is, I think this is, and I, I learned about this about an hour ago, right? Probably about an hour ago. And, um, and the more I think about it, the more I think about it, the worse it gets. And not the worse it gets, but the more I, like, it opens my eyes. So you see all the other club series winners. We just talked about the Cowboys. My, my thumbs are weapons. I don't know. And chat, I, listen. They can't ban the after fact, but what are they going to do? They're going to find another person to ban for someone a smaller offense. So they find the, the most least known club winner. This guy, nobody knows this guy from the Cowboys at all. We didn't hear him talk. We don't know his real name. Literally, he's nobody. He's not Skimbo. He's not Kiv. He's not Beast Mode. He's not Joke. He's not even like Kerry. He's not even Mills. He's not even Juan. He's somebody nobody heard of. And they find some shit that he did, which I believe he said deferred is deferred probation. So what that means is that once you finish your probation, which this guy did. So this kid from the Cowboys finishes probation. And so what happens when you have this deferred probation, when you finish it, your record is expunged. So what that means is that he does no longer has anything on his record. So EA found this guy that nobody knows. Okay. Yes, so nobody, so they found this guy, and they, they're going to find his past, and they're going to make him, they're going to make him the kind of, the, the I don't want to say, yeah, the ceiling. This is, this is what you can do, or right, if you have any type of probation or any type of conviction, we're going to ban you. And nobody gives a shit, right? Because this guy, he's, he's, it's his first time being anywhere, he's nobody, nobody's heard of him, you know, he gets banned, okay. But what this makes it happen makes it easier for EA to now ban the big ass controversial dude that did time in prison for some freak nasty creep shit. So if you ban the small guy, the little Cowboys Club Series dude that had his little conviction, now, listen, so now, now it's easier for him to say, oh, well, we banned the Club Series, the, the Cowboys guy. Now we can ban the fucking, the, the, you know, the, the freak ass dude that was extorting with nude pictures. You know what I'm saying? It makes it easier for them to now ban the Chiefs guy. Had they just banned the Chiefs guy right away, it would have been a little nuts. But if you go ahead and ban the first guy, you test the water a little bit, you know what I'm saying? And now, now you say, this is our standard we have. After the fact, is pretty nuts. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So that's, that's why I feel they went and did what they had to do for this kid, um, this this kid, the Cowboys winner, you know what I'm saying? I feel like they definitely used him as a springboard, used him as the first guy to ban to go ahead and go ahead and ban the uh, the Chiefs guy after the fact, man. Now this is what this is what I was told from him. They still get his money. He still gets his sixty five hundred dollars, but the the guy he lost to. Or the guy he beat, that user god guy, he is going to be the club series final. That is what the rule is. You know, and I just feel like it was impossible. No, long hair, I don't think they could have did that. I think it would have been a bigger nightmare for them. I think they got the Cowboys dude just to make it easier to ban the Chiefs guy. I think if Fame Nate never had if if Fame Nate never had this big thing blow over, the, the Cowboys dude would have been cool. You know, I think that's 1,000% why they did it, to make it easier for them to go ahead and ban Fame Nate. You know? So, yes, the Cowboys guy is gone. He can no longer play, but he's still going to get paid, but he can no longer represent the Cowboys. You know? I don't know, Harry. I, I, yeah, but I still think it would have been questionable. I think it's still bad to ban somebody 
off of something they did in the past. Especially, especially when America, you know, the whole judicial system gave him punishment for what he did. He did it. And then now you are saying, no, you can't. After the fact, when it's the easiest shit in the world to Google this person and the shit pop up, but you didn't do that before the fact, but after the fact, when it gets blown over and you look bad, now it's time to ban people. I think it's, I think, I, I mean, it's hard to say they had to stay with it. You know what I'm saying? And stay and say, you know, we support him and everything he's going through in his life. Uh, we want to stay with this kid. It's hard for them to do that because it's not worth it for them to do that. You know, fame Nate doesn't bring them any money. And the people that, you know, would have been furious if they stood by him, they do bring him money, you know? Yeah, the dude got banned for probation, you know, and I 1,000%, like I said, I think it just was a way for them to make it easier to ban Fame Nate, you know? And I, I would think they would do background checks. After Jacksonville, I feel like everybody has been background checked fairly solidly, you know what I'm saying? You know? Yeah, Nate is gone. Nate is banned. Uh, I mean, listen, I, I don't have... What do I have? I've only been arrested a couple times. Like I said, I just... I got DUIs. I got hit and runs. I got a lot of different things. Let me. All right, let's read this, man. Let's read this together. They already don't like me competing. They don't like me at all. All right. As we read this together, it's my first time seeing this. I have not read this. I just kind of know what's going on. I really think the Cowboys guy was really banned just to make it easier. Just to make it easier to ban Fame Nate, honestly. I legitimately think that's the move, but, you know. Um, following a recent tournament, we have become aware of the two EA Sports Madden NFL Championship competitors have a felony criminal history. It is our policy that players that have committed felony and serious crimes will not be allowed to compete in our events. The nature of the offenses involved are clearly not in keeping with the values of our competitors of Electronic Arts and the NFL. We take an action accordingly. Effective immediately, the two players have been indefinitely suspended from the Madden NFL Club Championship Series and will not be allowed to engage in any sanctioned Madden competitors. Oh, that was a little fucked up. Oh, there you go. I mean, like I said, man, if, if, listen, if Fame Nate never, if his stuff never happened, this dude, uh, my thumbs or weapons, would still be representing the Cowboys 1,000%. I just felt like they had to find somebody else uh, to ban with Fame Nate. I think it made it easier. I think it made it more acceptable. Not that it wouldn't have been acceptable had he got banned by himself, but it's just a... I don't know how to explain it, man. I really don't... I'm trying to think of an analogy, and I've been thinking of an analogy for a year. Not for a year, for, for an hour or so since I learned about this, because I really think it was kind of... It makes it less... I, I feel like it makes it makes it less of a one person thing. And I think it, it makes it less of a okay, you only if you would have had just banned fame Nate, it would have came down to okay, you only like, you know, only crimes versus kids are the ones that we care about. You know, if you do something else, we're cool. But if you have a crime versus a kid or a high school kid or whatever, if you have a, a crime versus kid, then you're not allowed to compete. It would have made it way more speculative if it was just one person that they banned. You know what I mean? But the fact that they banned this other guy for a lot lesser shit made it more of a vague, you know, a, a more wider range of you're not allowed to do this and compete. You know? You know, so for me, I just... Exactly, Giants. You know exactly what I'm saying. They made the Cowboys guy the bar, and the bar was low. But they made this Cowboys guy the bar because nobody knew who the shit he knew who the hell he was. He was some random guy that popped up. You know what I'm saying? And he had this little bit of history. 
They made an example and they made him the lower bar. So when they banned the higher guy that did the worst shit, it did not look as bad. Or it did not, it wasn't as, it didn't look as a knee jerk reaction. You know? You know, I, I just. It's just rough, man. You know, it, it, it just, it's rough for those guys. And I, I, I don't know what, I, I'd be sick, honestly, if I was a. Uh... Yeah, and it, it just, the whole thing with him, Nate, was to me, it was just like, man, you guys, everybody's so quick to just bury somebody they have never met. And I want to know why. Like, you guys give me an answer, because we're not going to, like, you guys, like, I see people in here in the chat that were just killing this kid, Fame Nate, like, he needs to, you know, only thing that's going, I heard, this one, only thing that's going to fix him is death. I heard that from multiple people, like, about somebody they have never talked to or never met, and to me, as a human being, that shit is nuts. It is nuts to me, man. You know, that's what I heard, and I just felt like that was really nuts. Exactly, Eric. That's my point. That's what I'm making. Exactly. So for me, they just went out and just said, you know, anybody would felt, and they found the lowest person, the most irrelevant club series. Not that he's irrelevant, but the no, the most, the least known club series winner, and they just and they started with him. It's really sad, man. Cause I tell you this, man. I don't know what you know what other guys have or other man competitors have. I would, you know, I, but I I couldn't see them all of a sudden turn around and ban and, you know, let's say Joke, let's say Joke had some shit that he did. Who knows why? Maybe he got in a big-ass fight, got some assault when he was in high school or something. You know, I don't think they could just out of nowhere ban Joke or they could ban, you know, Clef or they could ban, you know, Kiv or Pavin or Drenny. Like, God forbid, Drenny, you know, he beat up some little kid in summer camp or some shit. You know, like, how, you know... I don't think they could go ban somebody that we all have been watching play for so long, but it was easy to ban the kid that nobody really knew. You know? Yeah, for real. So I just... Ethan, that already happened. You know what happened to me? They're going to find something. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I just, I just, I, I just don't see how it affects anybody's life. That's all. <clears throat> the only things I get emotional over or I care about are things that directly affect me. You know, and, and like I said, if that kid won the MCS, if that kid was a janitor, if that kid, you know, was a tree cutter, you know, it just doesn't affect your life. It just, it doesn't matter to you. For someone to be that, you know upset and that that adamant about somebody you never met to me just that that shit to me just is mind blowing just just hatefulness you know that's all and that's just like how I'm not that person I'm and I saw how that killed me as a person I seriously saw how it killed me and it still kills me you know I don't like I said EA don't want shit to do with me you know, because of that, because of hateful people that want to bring people down is the reason why I still got to work so much harder than everybody else. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> That's all. So when something like this happens, I naturally, I'm going to, I am going, me, myself, in my mind, I am going to take a step back and say, hold on before I start airing this person out. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to just start airing that person out. And it's not, and I want you guys to know that for me, it's not, I'm defending this person. I'm de I'm, I'm questioning y'all actions. That's what I'm doing. I'm questioning the actions that you guys take. I'm, it's, it don't have shit to do about that person. I, this dude not no fucking hacker. Come on, bro. I know, to, listen, I know, to, I, that's one, though, the hacking shit is just nuts. Like, I just think that shit is nuts computer hacker. My man could have went into her crib, snuck up to the room and got on computer, but let's go. Come on. That's that's just creep shit. Not hacking computer shit. Uh 
I don't know what I, no, yo, I don't know what cancel culture means. I don't know what that means. Yeah, like what people talking like this dude is fucking like Keanu Reeves from The Matrix and shit. Like, yeah, like come on, man. Well, what does how, teach me how to hack? What the fuck is hack mean? Can I get into? Can I all of a sudden get into somebody? How do I get into somebody's phone picture? Like, I, I just don't that that. T- now, to me, what I think, I mean, now, I don't want to talk about what happened, because it's not a, honestly, all we know is what the article said, and we really don't know enough. I think he just, I don't know. Listen, man, I, I don't have a daughter. I probably will one day. But for me, uh, the one thing about life, listen, the one thing about life, I'll tell you, I mean, if you have a daughter, men are going to be wanting her constantly you know and i think i think i hope when i get to that age or and i have a daughter that i understand that she is probably always in danger you know what i'm saying yeah he probably just went and stole the picture i'm saying i feel like i feel like personally if i had a daughter which i don't and you guys can attest to this you guys that have a daughter i feel like i would be terrified of all things, you know, because I feel like, you know, that's all. You know, so I, this is how I feel. But Yeah, yeah, that's how I feel, you know, and, and I just, I, I don't know, man. I, I, I probably believe that, I probably believe that uh, you guys with children are a lot more uh, sensitive on these subjects, but for me, for me, it's not about, it's not about what the person did. It's just about the way we, we as a community react. And, and we say, that's the world. That's what you say, that's the world. But it doesn't have to be us. I feel like we can be, and the word is not, it's not forgiving. That's not what I'm asking you to do. Just like, don't rush to judgment. That's my only, the way we rushed to judgment, we just rushed. Like it wasn't even rushing. We were already there. But but the judgment was there. We didn't have to rush there or nothing. You know, that's pretty much my biggest, my biggest feeling in this is just to rush to judgment that we had. You know, we can't control the rest of the world. The world ain't shit. Nobody's shit, but we can be better than that. Uh, the way, Leo, the way, the way it turned out, it was exactly the same. That's not, a, like I said, that's what I mean. It's not about what they did. It was exactly the same. Like I said it was, it was seven, it was, you know, of all you guys, probably 50 of you guys knew who I was before Man Bowl. And half of y'all in here was probably airing me the same way. So they still been, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know whose decision it would be to keep them in club. He probably wouldn't be because, the, first of all, I, I want to tell you, and I tell you, I hate club series with a passion. I hate the shit. I hate it. I think it sucks. I think it's killing the MCS. I think it's brutal. I think it's brutally executed. I think it's just dog shit. And I, I honestly hope that we use this as a way to just get rid of the shit, period. Just get, I, I think Club Series sucks. The MCS was so much better. Four majors, let's go. You got two months to play this major, two months to play the other major, two months to play this major, and then the end major at the end of the year. What was wrong with that, you know? DNT, but at the same time, it's like, then, then we got to talk about drawing the line, you know? Where's the line? And they made the line the easy line, that's all. Free Cowboys champ, man. You know? Club Series sucks. Perry, I am all the way off Club Series. I suck at the mode. I keep getting popped in it. I just, you know, it's it's not about what the person did, man. I really, you know what I'm saying. 
y'all stuck on it. Like, okay, he was this bad, so we can judge him this way. You know? That's I just feel like I feel like we can be better people. That's all. <clears throat> it just makes me mad how we, you know what I'm saying? How we I feel like we can be better people. And and this is my point. Well, say say this person's terrible. You know, you don't want to fuck with them, then that's cool. Let him, you know what I'm saying? Then don't then don't talk to them. There's people that don't like me. You know what I'm saying? And I understand and I understand that. But that doesn't mean you have to rain this judgment on this person and this public just just negativity and public hatred of this person y'all have never talked to. To me, I just feel that's nuts and I feel like we can be better people. Better human beings. You know, that's all. You know. I understand if y'all and, and like I said, if y'all feel if y'all feel like he needs to be punished, I feel like he did get punished. The dude got punished. But if y'all feel he should be more punished or shouldn't, that's cool. But like that don't mean y'all got that, like I'm just saying I just want y'all to be better. That's all. You know, that's all. I just feel like we can be better human beings on shit that doesn't affect our life at all. It doesn't affect our life at all. If Fame Link won the MCS, if he got knocked out on online limbs, we still got to do the same shit we do every day. It's not going to make you happy. It's not going to make you happy if he fails. It's not going to make you happy if he succeeds. You know? That's all. I just, I just wish you guys... Yeah, yeah I just... Is what it is. I, I just one thing I want you guys to know is that I'm not defending anybody's actions. Never will I. People do wrong shit all the time. That's not the case. I just wish we, we were more, you know, cautious in all our judgment. Now maybe this person deserved to get aired out. I just that's not my that's not my uh it's not my place to air somebody out. But I just wish we could all be more careful, more careful on our uh judgment. You know, and the rest of the world ain't shit. That don't mean we we don't gotta be shit out of it. We can be better. We can be the best. We can be the best gaming community in the world. I truly believe that, man. But it's that. But let me know what you guys think on YouTube, on SoundCloud. Let me like. I just. I really just feel like we can be better people. You know, and I feel like you have situations. <clears throat> I feel like we have we have situations where, and I think every situation that you gets brought up in your life or outside life, it, all you can affect is how you deal with it. You know, like all you can affect is how you react to a situation. You know, you can't control what's going to happen to this kid. Only EA can control that. Only Matt Marku could. They they gonna do whatever they can do to save their ass. That's all. You know what I'm saying, but all you can do is affect how you, you react. You know, for for people for us to react so negatively to everything that's so miserable, we can be better. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, I guess I guess he's in a kid. I don't know. Dude, like I said, this is all about... To me, it's not about this specific person. It's about any person. You know, that, that's how it is. Because it's going to be... We're going to find out bad shit about X, Y, and Z next month, too. <clears throat> how are you going to react to that? Because when X, Y, Z gets turned out to be some murderer, it ain't going to affect you at all. Him competing is not going to make you happy. It's not going to make you sad. It's not going to change your life. But how are you going to react to it? It's a question. Does this person burning at the stake? Does this person going back in jail make you happier? Does that make you wake up with a smile? No. You just people just saying shit to say to hear themselves talk. And I think we get to a point where everybody wants to make it about them. You know, this is my opinion. This is what he should do. It doesn't affect you. We can be better people. You know, and I've learned a lot in the last. Four years about being a better person, you know, a lot. You know, my life has changed. My mindset has changed through the roof for the shit I've been through in the last four years, you know. 
And that's all. But anyway, man. Yeah, I just, like I said, it's not, I don't want to turn it into a, what he did, what he didn't do. That's all. But like I said, guys, this has been on two and a half hours. I told you it would be long today. Didn't really even talk about games too much. It was so many games. I've been told we got to do a twice a week show because of how many club series. Because we didn't really talk about games. Like, we showed a little bit. Obviously, we showed D. Croft and Kid was the best game. We showed a little bit of Beast Mode, a little bit of Prime game. <clears throat> so, I've been told we got to do the twice a week thing. You know what I'm saying? It's a possibility. Um, I'll think about it. I don't know what club series tomorrow. I believe Buffalo is tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So, we shall see. Uh, we shall see. Whatchamacallit? We shall see how Buffalo goes. Kwani's going to be there. So, I hope Kwani goes ahead and win. I'm interested in you know what I was thinking today. All these shit runners. I'm I'm excited to see Stevie J. I would love to see Fitz play. I thought Jay Bird was a good runner. <laughs> I'm who do you guys think are actually like good runners? I want to see good runners that have been good runners play this game. Now it sounds crazy, but I do want to see Stevie J play. I think he's a good runner. Obviously, Joke is a good good runner, period. Master, that's another one. Although I've heard Master is kind of shitty right now. VY, obviously, the King is much watch action. I'm excited to watch the King. Can't lie. <coughs> but that's what I was thinking as I was watching Bobby V and Tony run the ball. And I said to myself, man, if they put this... If, if they put somebody good, like, run stick and somebody, like, smart, like, bro. You know? The King versus Dugatti Bugs. Right, man, this is going to be fun to watch. So I'm excited to watch. What, chat? you guys can help me. Which clubs are this week? I, I know Kwani plays tomorrow. We just saw Henry play. Um... Patriots are this weekend, Skimbo to play, so that's going to be exciting. <clears throat> Honestly, I don't know. People ask me all the time, when do these clubs start? When do they pop off? And for me, uh, I don't know. I just follow Man League Ops and refresh it all the time. That's all. So I really, AFC and the NFC East is this week. Okay, the chat is cool, man. I know for real, I really appreciate all y'all being here. Man, Jehovah, I listen, I read so many Bible verses on judgment. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If you have any grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord has forgave you. Now, it's one that I read <clears throat> that, that really spoke to me, chat. Now, I'm not the most religious person. I grew up in the church. I grew up in the church, you know what I'm saying? So I'm, I guess I am pretty religious. But this is the verse. I'm going to put this in the chat. You got Actually, I'm going to just bring it up on the screen. This is the Bible verse that spoke to me. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I, I don't even want to bring these up, like put them on Twitter or anything. Because for me, it's kind of a little, it's a little rough. You know what I'm saying, chat? Because I don't want to start that whole, whole bring God into it and stuff like that. But this is the verse that spoke to me. And it kind of reflects... <clears throat> how I feel about the situation, chat. And it says, this is Romans 14, 13. It says, therefore, let us stop passing judgment on one another. Instead, make up your mind to not put any stumbling block or obstacle in the way of a brother or sister. That is my, and this this is 1,000% how I feel. It's 1,000, no, listen. Acts, Romans, yes, New Testament. No, for real, like this is, this is exactly how I feel about the situation. It's not about what they did. It's about let's stop passing the judgment. No matter what they did. There's no reason to judge them. But make your mind up not to be put any stumbling block or obstacle in the way of somebody else. That's all. Take them to church, Clef. You feel me? 
Like that this speaks to me on a but make up your mind not to put any stump So what this saying is like my man is trying to get his shit together. But we as the band community, we gotta be the ones to hold him back even more. Like, yeah, we went all the way left, man. Like, for, for, for real. Like, that's my point. The podcast is so versatile. Are the clubs this week or the Dolphins, Jets, Redskins, Patriots? Okay. No, for real. Like, that's all. And this this has nothing. Listen, this is this does not pertain to any specific. You know, this don't pertain to any specific thing. This is literally just, I, I just, this really speaks to me, man. Just don't put any stumbling block and obstacle in it. In anybody else's way, and for me, that becomes uh, just just don't stop them from stumbling block is the biggest thing. My man is already people that you know you guys are just judging are already walking up a hill. Don't don't make it harder for him. It's not what do you get out of making it harder for him? Pause. Podcast so versatile, so versatile. You know what I'm saying? Why y'all capping in the chat? Why y'all arguing, man? That's all. I just don't want y'all arguing. No, but for real, man, <clears throat> you don't have to be that obstacle. That's all I'm saying. You that's listening to me, you, you don't have to be that obstacle. You choose to be that obstacle. And my question to you is why? You choose to be the person that try to hold somebody back. Why? Because they held me back. You know what I'm saying? They still holding me back. That's why I got to lie about my drops, man. So if you ever come in my chat and you type drops and you follow me on social media to get drops... You aren't getting no fucking drops. And I'm sorry. But I don't have the drop power. You know what I'm saying? Clef, your ass ain't going to preach, man. That's what you be saying to them big chicks, man. No, for real, man. Y'all don't, Jehovah, you feel me? You don't have to be that person that makes the obstacle block. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to be the obstacle. What? Listen, that's why I'm at. I don't want to be the obstacle of no other man. That's corny. That's my whole point. Yes, Clef, like, not even not the BBWs, but you know what I'm saying? Like, he, he talking about, he like the BWs. You know what I'm saying? Not the BBBW. He, he like he like them too. Like, about 210, something like that. Clef probably like, like 180. And he just like a joint with a little more weight than him. That's all. He like it's home a little more. That's my only point. Just I just don't want to be the to choose to be the obstacle. Willingly be the obstacle for somebody else. Willingly be the stumbling block for somebody else. Let that if that person going they going to succeed. They going to get better. Let them do it. And it's not this specific person. It's any person. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, listen. They're not sloppy. They're not. A, hey, Ethan. They're not a sloppy two ten. You know what I'm saying? They 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 they're solid two ten. <clears throat> yeah, they husky. That's it, long hair. They husky. You know what I'm saying? They husky. Husky is the word. But no, I appreciate you guys for real, man. Y'all in here talking about real shit. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? So and I'm glad you guys let me talk about real shit. And uh um, Put your two cents in it. Because that's what I'm saying. Man, the podcast wouldn't be shit without y'all. If y'all don't bring the energy, I can't bring the energy. That's solid, too, son. <clears throat> but like I said, this one is episode 55, Double Nickel, boys. That's over a year. We closed it on episode 60. You know what I'm saying? Adjust. My girl probably like 190. My girl's big. But she like 5'10 and built, you know what I'm saying, and half ass. So. The chat? No, the chat, everybody cool. As long as y'all getting wrong. Romans 14, 13. Is that the one I put out there? Yeah, I'm telling you. Romans 14, 13, man. For real. Don't be the obstacle. That's all. That person don't. <clears throat> 55. Listen, my point is this. You don't have to be the obstacle. That's all I want you to learn, man. You don't have to be the person to judge somebody. You don't have to be the obstacle for them to be better. That's all. But this was episode 55. So I'm to like, yo, SoundCloud gang. SoundCloud gang only. Put your, put your cash apps. One of y'all getting blessed. Bless up.